My name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. That was Whooping the Eclipse uh, with this little guy. This is uh, my newest little RC drift car chasing setup with the Batwing camera mount. And yeah, I didn't have batteries charged for anything <coughs> other than this. And I figured, what the hell? A little bit of jello, but not too bad. Um, I need to switch these motors out. The, these, these motors are rattly as hell i don't it, it could be the props but um yeah i i spun it up in i spun each motor up in turtle mode as i've shown you guys a million times to check how they're balanced and there's one of them that's really well balanced motor too but then the other three are, are yeah a little bit of a mess so that was that was kind of surprising i thought that i put fresh motors on this but maybe not i don't know but uh the jello wasn't too bad it was just there Hey, uh, if you're going to build a walk snail 1S 65 millimeter tiny whoop like this one, um, I have the, uh, I have the DVR on the goggles, actually. Um, the, the, the file from the flight before that one, uh, is corrupted that I pulled off of the DVR because apparently with 36,000 KV motors, 0702s, um, <laughs> you can brown out the Walksnail VTX pretty much any time. <laughs> I went down to the bottom of the street and I just, it, the, I'd, I'd been flying for maybe like 30 seconds. It was a relatively fresh folded cell battery. Um, and I, I went down to the bottom of the street and just laid into the throttle and just sat it at full throttle for like probably about a full second. And... The video just <laughs> and, and walks nil just browns out. Um, so I flipped it up into horizon mode and then I maintained like 50 ish percent throttle to make sure it would stay in the air. And I just crossed my fingers for about 10 seconds <laughs> while uh, walks nail rebooted and reconnected. And I was way the hell up in the air. Uh, the LRS held on totally fine. And I had like a couple of seconds of like, where the hell am I <laughs> in, my, in my neighborhood? Um, and it had drifted like way farther down in, in the neighborhood. But then I, I saw our little uh, dead end and I was like, ooh, that's us. <laughs> I just gently brought it back in and yeah, it's here. Uh, so put 
angle mode or horizon on a switch first don't give up when you lose video um don't put 36,000 kv 070 excuse me 0702s on a walk snail 1s 300 mah battery rig if you plan on laying into the throttle forever i have i have put hundreds of batteries through this and i've never had that issue because i've always flown it inside and when you fly inside you never sit at full throttle for more than like a quarter of a second uh so that was pretty <laughs> I, I thought it was gone i was just like well i'm gonna do all the things that i need to do here to hopefully not lose this um and Walksnail took an excruciatingly long amount of time to like reboot or whatever the hell it was doing. Um, so yeah, that was my excitement for the Eclipse. <laughs> I was just like, well, there it is. Great. <laughs> just got it all figured out. Just got the camera mount set up on it. And it's going to be in a tree in Never Never Land. <laughs> uh, but yeah, made it home. Scary. Also, uh, what couldn't have helped is that um, I've got the... Although, I, I probably have enough... Yeah, no, it wasn't... It, never mind. It wasn't antenna related. I was about to bitch and moan that I've got the antenna on top of the PCBs. And so, when you're flying up above yourself, you're putting the antenna... Um, but you're putting two layers of PCB in between your goggles and the antenna. Um, but, no, it browned out. It, it, the, it, it wasn't losing signal strength. It was not a signal strength issue at all. It was... 36,000 kV at full throttle for for a full second. I'm sure on the goggles, the DVR on there um, is, uh, I'm sure it'll show like 2.8 volts before it browns out. I was not looking at the, I guess the real solution is that if you're going to do a, uh, if you're going to hammer the throttle on a rig like this, stare at the, at the battery voltage when you're doing it. And if you see the battery voltage get down to like 3.1, 3.0, get the hell off full throttle. Uh, and you'll be fine. Hockey Rounds was first in the chat. Ethan W is next. Wake and Bake, Disabled, con disabled Combat Android. Seamus Kelly, J. Hines, Northern Tier, FPV. Timmons. Uh, Timmons is who designed this amazing little bat wing mount that prevents you from having to run silly carbon fiber frames on tiny whoops, which ruin the performance. Um, this will be available sooner than later. We're putting the finishing touches on it. Just be patient. It'll be, it'll be ready. It'll be over on my discord, which you can get to from CIDFPV.com. Uh, some guy FPV, you gelin, Mr. Blue Sky, Cloud Hopper, Tongue Out FPV, Matt Norton, Scotty Scott, uh, Robert Rosser, Sleepy CBR, Doubles FPV, Striker, Quad, Um, Douglas Otwell, Kevin the Alien, Tommy Lou, Anonymous, uh, Striker, where's my, where's my wrench? That's a good one. Uh, Beef FPV, Robert Rosser again, not applicable, Tony Morgan, Big Poppy, Steve Jobs, 661 FPV, Upside, Kevin the Alien, Morton Upshot, Cold Front and Penguin, CMYK FPV, Floating Frog, Kevin, uh, Hendrix Freakazoid, Cole Powers, H2O, Sulfur FPV, Michael Stewart, Lucky, JP Spin, uh, 661 Floaty Frog, Upside, J Deegs, Hat Trick, uh, No Nickname, No Name, JP Spin again. Uh, YouTube just did the thing, so we're going to leave it there, I think. Cloud Hopper with a $10 super chat, no comment, just $10 of support. Thank you so much. This is a completely crowdfunded thing that we've got going. Um, head on over to CIDFPV.com to support me in a bunch of different ways. There's a bunch of free stuff you can do, like replacing your bookmarks or your URL suggestions with my affiliate links. You can just go to my website every single time you're about to check out on a website, but that's silly do the things um that make it easy for yourself use someone's affiliate links look like those of us that create content on youtube have affiliate links all over the damn place so if you're placing an order on the internet someone has an affiliate link to that website it's free money it doesn't affect you in any way other than that you support the person whose content that you're watching so yeah do it it's a really cool way to uh support people free of charge uh, there's also the Patreon, which is the best possible way that you can support me. If you've got a couple of extra dollars, uh, you can jump onto the Patreon for three bucks a month. That's like 10 cents a day or seven and a half cents per hour of live stream content that I do every month. Uh, today's Monday, April 8th, by the way. Uh, there's an Etsy store where you can buy some fun stickers and some random hardware. There is a Fiverr page where you can work one-on-one -on -one with me, take advantage of somebody with over seven years of experience in FPV, um, Get all your questions answered, dive a little bit deeper than we do here on the live streams, um, and just get like specific info on your exact setups. I can help you build a better rig, 
tune it better, uh, learning how to tune in the process, uh, and I can help you fly better through the simulator. We both jump into the sim, I can see your screen with your stick overlay, and then we do a Skype call so I can talk you through some stuff. Um, lots of different ways that, uh, that we can keep this show going. In the chat, if you want to talk directly to me, all you got to do is type CIOTTIFPV. You can put an at in front of it, but you don't have to. CIOTTIFPV, no spaces, and it'll light up an orange. You can do that with each other. If you want to get somebody's attention, just type their name, and as long as you spell it right and put the spaces in the right spots, it'll show up and it'll light up an orange for them. Sleepy CBR says hello, CIOTTIFPV and gang. Striker says yo, yo, yo. Uh, Striker also says I finally got my Insta360 Go 3 mounted on my Baby Ape 2, but flight time was ass. I was getting like two minutes. Um, yeah, I did not upgrade from the Insta360 Go 2 to the 3 because it's heavier and it's really, like, it doesn't seem to be any better quality. Um, they both shoot 2.7K, so I, I don't really understand what they did with the 3 other than to make it fatter and put, um, they put it in an interesting case with a screen on it, but that doesn't do anything for us, so, um... Yeah, the 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 Go 3, it's heavy, man. That it's like 38 grams, I want to say. Um that's that's going to be tough for any so Baby Ape 2, I'm assuming the 2 is 2 inch. Um that's a pretty pretty decent payload for a 2 inch rig. Um if you want more runtime Easiest thing to do is going to be go to like two. No, it's not the easiest thing. Easiest thing is to run a bigger battery. Um, but yeah, going up to like a two and a half inch setup or even a three inch setup was, is going to help a ton. That's personally what I would do. Although it depends. Like, do you want it to fly like a freestyle rig or do you want it to fly like a Cinewhoop? Um, if you're going to do like a two inch rig and pick up that heavy of a payload, it's going to kind of be a Cinewhoop. To get it to fly like a freestyle rig, you're going to want to go up to two and a half, ideally three inch. Um, with some like 1404s, if you're 4S, 4500 ish KV, um, and away you'll go. That'll make a huge difference. Kevin the Alien says, Someone isn't dealing with crappy icons, and it shows. Um, yeah, so there's a, there's a problem with, uh, so I had to turn, after the live stream, I had to turn off the Drive Alive thing, uh, because it interferes with, uh, Real Study. And this is me now turning Drive Alive back on. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to leave it. I don't use Real Steady all that often, but yeah. And <laughs> for the record, something happened and Drive Alive turned itself off during the stream yesterday. And so the, 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 um, there was all kinds of stuttering at the end of the stream yesterday because Drive Alive wasn't on. I was like, what the hell? It was working for me a couple days ago, and then it wasn't. But, yeah, it, it magically turned itself off for some reason. But it's on now, so we'll see. Uh, Max have this weird issue. Frank Nicholas says it's, it's my hard drive enclosures, but... Um, I mean, I, I have two different hard drive enclosures. I've tested both of them. They both do this. Um... um he did say that like it's this is, you have to buy a more expensive hard drive enclosure and like everything I buy is as cheap as possible. Um, so yeah, but I've done a bunch of research on Google and Reddit and whatnot, and there's tons of people on Macs having this issue. Um, it, it's very weird. I don't know. The it, it seems from what I've read, Apple has really prioritized um, solid state hard drives. And they've just like ignored the whole t entire world that uses, you know, less expensive, but bigger, but with massive amounts of storage, um, OG hard drives. I, I find that so hard to believe because everybody, because so many, not everybody, obviously, but so many people are doing video editing, photo editing, um, and I can't imagine that they're all using solid state drives. So. I don't know. It's it's a very weird issue that continues to plague me. Again, I don't use Real Steady all that often, um, so I just need to remember to turn Drive Alive on and off, off then on every time I use Real Steady, which is like all of about once a week. I just forgot today. Um, so yeah, there's that. Striker says, anyone in chat know of an Insta360 Go 3 mount for a Baby Ape 2? I'm mounting it with a uh, makeup foam thing, leftover battery strap and some rubber bands. It's incredibly scuffed. Um, yeah, you know, it, mounts for Insta360 Go 2s have been 
difficult for me to find um, on the on the. I the, I've picked frames because there have been mounts available on Thingiverse before. Um, yeah, that's how bad the situation is. Uh, so yeah, I can't help you there, unfortunately. But maybe in somebody chat, maybe somebody in chat can. CMYK leaving the uh, CRDFPV.com link in the chat. Thank you, dude. Six six one FPV says, "Is this a one and a half millimeter shaft, sixty five millimeter? It is indeed. Uh, if if not, it's uh, it's not indestructible yet. Oh <laughs> well. Um, so yeah, the, I, I've been wanting to to kind of do this for a while, but the thirty three thousand KV eight hundred twos have been tied up." Um, so the, the main thing that I want to kind of screw around with today, it, it, it's, it's a little bit clickbaity and kind of memey. Um, but Hey, I usually don't do that. So I, I, I hopefully get a free pass to do it every once in a while. Um, we're going to build an industry. We're going to build an indestructible tiny whoop, um, using an AIO that's no longer manufactured. That's almost impossible to find now, which is the OG <laughs> happy model AIO. This is why I said indestructible tiny whoop that you can't build because <laughs> you can't get this AIO. Um, you can't get these motors either. Um, they're out of stock. At some point, you will be able to buy these motors, but you'll actually have to buy two sets of motors. The 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 motors that I'm going to put on this thing are, um, it's a set of 0802 27,000 kV iGAO motors, iGAO special edition motors. Uh, it's the, the, the bell with one and a half millimeter motor shaft from those motors. Um, and then it's the stator from the 0802 33,000 kV uh, Imoptera or Ipomera uh, motors off of both of which are off of only available on tinywoop.com. Um, so, I mean, like technically somebody out there could uh, build this this setup, but it, it would be kind of silly too. the <laughs> the reason that I'm doing this is that Gemfan made these propellers a while back. This is a Gemfan 1208 with a one uh, one and a half millimeter uh, prop mount. And I've had two sets of these just sitting there staring at me for many months, uh, probably like six months. These have been out for a while. Um, and yeah, I thought it would be kind of fun tonight to piece this together. Uh, this AIO that we're going to be putting on here is the AIO that is having the weird, um, it gets light, then it gets dark, it gets light, then it gets dark. There's something wrong with the VTX issue. Um, and so what the hell? Let's throw it together. I, I, I don't want to destroy these motors though. So like, I'm not going to just batter the shit out of this thing tonight just to see how much abuse that we can throw at it. What I'm going to do is build it and we'll see how it flies. These are big, heavy motors, and I typically don't really love these specific propellers. They're kind of heavy propellers, um, and I don't like tri-blades either. So mainly tonight is like, let's fly it and see what the flight characteristics are, and then if you want to build as close as you can possibly get to an indestructible tiny whoop, this is the formula. Um, at some point, the Mobula 6 2024... AIO will come out, will be available. And that seem that AIO seems to be super durable. It seems to be maybe as durable as this old school Mobula 6 ELRS AIO. Um, that's the best that we got, right? We're, we're in a really weird situation with Tiny Whoop AIOs right now. Mo like 90% of them are just useless. Um, the one really, really, really good AIO um, that we've had access to for a while in the Mobula 6 ELRSs is, is now out of production. Hopefully the 2024 one lives up to its reputation. Um, but yeah, at the moment you can't get the Mobula 6. So like to build a, a good tiny whoop right now is a little bit of a nightmare. Like you have to go the racing uh, whoop build route and get the beta FPV cross style AIO, run an external VTX, um, which is, yeah, needlessly heavy and complex for freestyle, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, just wait it out. The Mobula 6 2024 is coming. It'll be here sooner than later. Um, we're also going to do mailbag. Uh, a couple of the packages that uh, I've been waiting for finally showed up. Uh, we're going to fire six batteries, uh, a mix on the indestructible rig, and I'm probably going to put the, um, 
a 75 millimeter rig or two up in the air just to give you I, I think with how heavy this thing is going to be I want to compare it to to how heavy uh, and sloppy a 75 millimeter rig is and then we'll put a proper lightweight 65 millimeter rig up in the air so that you really can see um, why I don't like heavy rigs inside the house. Uh, so yeah, should be a fun one tonight. Uh, Hat Trick says, okay, gotta ask, have you tried those Magic 1102s on a 65 millimeter for the three minute th for the three minute flight time? Is the performance just trash? Um, I have not tried 1102s. When you say 65 millimeters, do you mean 65 millimeters motor to motor and 1.2 inch props as in like uh, the smallest possible tiny whoop or when you say 65 millimeters do you mean two and a half inch prop as in like a toothpick if you mean 65 millimeter motor to motor an 1102 on a 65 mil rig it, it, it would barely get off the ground um, and it would almost certainly not run for three minutes of, of three minutes runtime. Um, with a 65 millimeter rig, in order to get any runtime out of it, you have to build it as light as humanly possible. And really, the magic formula is 702s. Um, the reason that I get, not on this one, this is the walk snail rig with a little bit less runtime, but like all of the other analog 65 mil rigs, the biggest reason that I get the three minute run times uh, on the 300 mAh batteries is because they're on 702s, regardless of the KV, right? Like even at 40,000 KV, we only spend through the course of a battery, we only spend like maybe two full seconds at full throttle because 65 millimeter rigs are for inside the house. And so we stab the throttle and we get right off of it. And we fly like 99% of the battery at 30% throttle. 702s are really efficient down there. They're really lightweight. The bell is really lightweight. Um, and yeah, if you pair that with the rest of the rig being ultralight, it's, it's awesome. Um, the other problem with the 1102s, um, is that they're only 22,000 KV and 22,000 KV on a 65 millimeter motor to motor rig is pretty much useless. Like it, the weight of those motors and that low of a KV, I'm not convinced it would actually fly. It probably would. It would probably get off the ground, but it would be just be completely useless. Um, so yeah, 65 mil motor to motor, 1.2 inch prop rigs need ultra light motors, ultra high KV, um, 1102s, you would never, ever, ever want to run them. It's, it's actually a stretch to run these 1102s, in my opinion, on a 1.6 inch propeller. Um, I think these motors would actually really, I, I think they'd perform really well on the 45 millimeter propellers, the 1.7 or 1.8 inch propellers. I think they could even turn a two inch prop if there was a lightweight biblade two inch prop, which I don't think that there is. Um, but yeah, 1102 is a big motor for a 75 mil rig. Um, you would just, yeah, it would it would not pair well at all on a on anything smaller than 75. Uh, Morton Upshot says, I dropped an Eclipse flight in troubleshooting Discord. I have a motor stall at 30 seconds. Should I worry about that motor? Uh, here's what you should do, Morton. Try to, try to figure out from the footage which side it's dropping on so that you can isolate which motor it is. You might have already done that. So let's say it's motor number two. Take motor number two off and switch it with any other motor. And then fly the rig a bunch more and see if you can get it to do it again. And if it if the problem chases that motor, replace that motor. If the problem stays on the same corner, you gotta replace the AIO, unfortunately, because it's that channel of the ESC, right? Um, so that's actually an easy one. Uh, the, the hard part is determining for sure which corner it's, it's dropping on. Um, but sometimes you can get it to happen twice in a row and it's just obvious on the, on the DVR which corner it is and, and away you go. Um, if you can at least Isolate if it's doing it to the right or to the left. Take the both right motors and both left motors and swap them. And then you should be able to isolate if it's doing it. Or same deal, like front and back, right? If you can't tell which corner, but if you can tell that it's doing it front or back, just rotate them like that. And, and that's an easy way to kind of figure that out. Um, the, 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 the subtext of the question is is actually great, though. The, the sub... I'm going to... I'm just going to make this up. I don't know if this is true or not, but um, I'm going to just 
yeah, just bear with me here. I'm going to make up the fact that that's the first time it ever happened, right? And and so there, there's a really cool subtext to that question of like, if I have a rig and it drops um, and, it, and a motor stalls or it just drops an arm, right? It falls out of the air. Um, should I be worried? For sure. Like a rig dropping out of the air is a big issue. And, and like, especially when you don't expect it. Like if you did... If you made a change or like you see that the motor wires are janky or like if if there's something that's leading you down the path and, and like basically if it happens and you're like, yeah, I deserve that. OK, but like if there's no reason that a rig should fall out of the air and it falls out of the air for the love of God, don't ignore that. Um, really just like stop and um it's okay to put it back up in the air, but like keep it low, keep it over the grass, right? Stuff like that. Do throttle punches, try to instigate the behavior again, but like never, ever, ever let a rig fall out of the air and just be like, oh, it's just beta flight being weird. It's not, it's not beta flight being weird. It's something being fucked up. Fix it. Like at, at least really start working on fixing it. Um, because yeah, if, if you ignore it, then for sure, the next time you're flying anywhere and there's someone directly below you or a car directly blo below you, that's when it's going to choose to fall out of the air again. And then you have the potential of ruining this for all of us, right? Like, don't be that guy that ends up on the news. This is not me even talking to you at this point, Morton. This is me talking to everybody. Um, yeah, rigs falling out of the air when you don't expect them to. That is not a safe rig. Like, do not ignore that. You have to, like... You have to at least figure out something that you think it might be rather than just completely ignoring it and just being like, oh, it's just having a bad day. Like, it's it's not. No, it, it, electronics do not really work like that. Sometimes they do. But, um, yeah, that needs to put you into, like, that needs to put troubleshooting mode on the top of your list of, of what you're doing. And you need to, to figure something out. And then you need to test the hell out of it to to try to get it to be a safe rig again. Um, for me, if a rig falls out of the air, that rig is not safe. Like nothing in that rig is safe for like the next 20 or 30 batteries. Even if I get it down and I'm like, oh yeah, that motor's cooked. That's definitely what it was. When I put that, when I fix, if, if, if I figure out what it is and I fix it, that's still not a safe rig. Also, because like God knows what it, what else it might've hurt, right? If a motor cooks and the enamel burns, it could hurt the ESC on that channel. So like at that point, that thing is unsafe. Don't do anything even remotely sketchy with it for a whole bunch of batteries in a row. Um, that's how I've not lost really any rigs other than the one that was my fault that I flew too low and crossfire fail safe into the goddamn bay in Charleston. Um, I dropped down super low and put like, a half a mile of dirt in between the the antennas and you can't do that um but yeah i've i've not lost a rig other than that one and and it's from having like this sort of approach of like when something bad happens don't ignore it so that's that's my uh that's my very strong opinion on that one great question brother uh oh my god the chat's on fire hold on let's uh let's go quick here because we got some work to do tonight some guy FPV with a five dollar super chat. Thank you, homie. He says, "Have you ever uh, have you ever been to Lanier Raceway to chase drift cars in Brazelton? I have indeed. Um, all of my drift edits on my channel. Uh, well, not all of them, I guess. Uh, all of them, but the first one are uh, from Lanier. So if you come in here and then you go to well, I don't need to open that in a new tab, but if you go to edits, this is the easiest way to look at all of them. Um, so you've got me chasing uh, T Pain here." And then you've got, you know, I, uh, there should be a an edit when it was like really dark. Yeah, yeah, hanging with Up Garage here, uh, Drift Dreams. This is this is the edit that I've got the most time and love and and blood and sweat and tears into. Uh, four inch movement here, chasing those guys with a four inch rig. There should be another one here that was that was in the dark with like a session. Where the hell is it? Yeah, there it is. Drifting away, uh, featuring T Pain's Pickle Rig 240. Um, so yeah, there's a whole bunch of content on my channel. Um, hanging out with those guys. Uh, yeah, it's a cool spot. I, I I would I would love to go out there and do it again, but it it happens. Uh, yeah, whatever. 
reasons. Uh, thank you for the super chat, my friend. Thank you for the support. Tony Morgan with a $10 super chat. He says, more Teddy. All right. You paid for it. Oh, where is he? There he is. He's sleeping. You lazy shit. What are you doing? You wouldn't. You wouldn't go sleep with Azalea, but you'll come and sleep with me. Oh, my God. You're going to make her very sad. Look at this son of a bitch. Look at this lazy shit. Look at him. That's the face of a dog that just got woken up. What's up, buddy? You were so bad today. You're a bad boy every day, come to think of it. You were extra bad today, just barking at everything, screaming at the squirrels. Ugh. I tried to take him for a walk and he didn't want to. I took him out during the uh, during the eclipse, actually, and he refused to go to the uh, to the neighbor's house. I had to pick his ass up and carry him. What is the matter with you? Teddy is a miniature schnauzer. Look how miniature this dog is. He's only this big. <laughs> Depending on how big your television is. Or what you, <laughs> the screen you're watching this on, I should say. Now you're, nobody watches anything on television other than me. Uh, I watch like 90% of the YouTube that I watch on a television. Don't go upstairs, buddy. Stay here. All right, good. Go upstairs, buddy. Uh, Quad Um says, uh, thank you, Tony Morgan. Very kind of you, my friend. Uh, Teddy, thanks for making daddy some money. Good boy. He's gone. Uh, Jay Hines says, what's a good two and a half quad to build? Uh, my current favorite, I mean, Jay, th that that is a, a an ultra open-ended question. I don't know if you want a tiny whoop. I don't know if you want a cinematic rig, um, prop guards, no prop guards, big, heavy freestyle rig to carry like a, a, a an HD cam, right? Uh, so I'm just going to close my eyes and point. At, at at an answer and and hopefully that's the right answer for what so the, the the way that you decide uh in my opinion what rig you build right this is actually a, a good conversation i'll try to make it as quick as possible i could talk for a half an hour about this because this is really important um but the the way that in my opinion you should decide what rig you build is where are you going to fly it um if you're going to fly inside your house, you build a 65 millimeter tiny whoop. If you're going to fly in your front yard and your backyard and you want the guards and you want to shoot tiny little gaps, you're going to build a 75 millimeter rig. Um, if you want to fly a little bit bigger in front or behind your house, um, you're going to build a, tw a two and a half inch or three inch toothpick. Um, if you want to have something that you can fly around the house, but it's big and powerful and gnarly, uh, but then you can also take it out to bigger locations and fly it there. Uh, you're going to build something like the Quadmula uh, Gin, which is D-J-I-N-N. -N. Um, this is like a big, gnarly, school bus style um, two and a half inch rig. It's just like a miniature five inch freestyle build. Um, so, yeah, there's some info for you. Uh, that's if, if me closing my eyes and pointing is closing my eyes and pointing at the gin. Uh, you can put an O3 in there. Uh, you can put walk snail in there. You can put whatever you want in there. Uh, it's even it's 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 big enough uh, to to pick up like an Insta 360 Go 2 or an Insta 360 Go 3. Hell, you could probably pick up a DJI uh, Action 2 with it. But don't do that. That camera sucks. The field of view is the the, the fisheye is just obnoxious. Um, I just offended the shit out of somebody by saying that. But yeah, there you go. Uh, Stryker says, I ended up getting it for free, so I'm going to take it, but, uh, if I could have picked, I would have gotten the Thumb Pro 4K. Uh, Insta360 Go 3 for free, that's a, that's a good damn deal right there. Uh, Stryker, what you should do is build, like, a gin, <laughs> or, or when it comes back in stock, like, uh, uh um, well, you're going to build whatever you can find. <laughs> You're going to build whatever you can find them out for. So, yeah, that's what I would do. I would troll Thingiverse. Uh, and what's the other one? Uh, Yegi. Y-E-G-G-I. Uh, troll Thingiverse and Yegi for Insta360 Go 3 mounts. And eventually you'll find one for a frame that's half decent. Uh, and away you go. But I, I would recommend for a camera that heavy, 
minimum two and a half inch big boy rig on like 1303s, 1304s, or a three inch rig on 1404s or maybe even bigger. But the T-Motor 1404 4500s and 4S, rip. They, they would move that camera around really nice. Um, uh, Striker also says two is the 3.5 inch, 3.5 inch 4S. I'm a little confused by that, but I think I answered your question. Uh, on Acomet FPV says, just ordered the, uh, <laughs> typed Woblite, but Moblite 7 walks now. What motor do you suggest upgrading to? Uh, Moblite 7 walk snail uh walk snail is so heavy that for me i would go all the way um and go all the way to the and i don't have the best answer ever for you yet because i'm still in right in the middle of the process of finding the right motor for a heavy ish walk snail 75 millimeter build which is basically what you have there um it's heavy ish because walk snail is heavy um, the mob light is actually pretty lightweight for what it is, but walk snail is still really heavy on there. So it's a, it's still a really heavy rig. Um, so like today, my answer to that question is the beta FPV 1102 22,000s, but I've got RC and power 10 03s in the box over here. I've got RC and power 10 02s on the way. I've got, uh, I'm talking to VCI about their 0803s and so yeah, there's a lot more motor testing coming. Um, so you're just gonna have to come back. You're just gonna have to subscribe and, and, and hang around a little bit more. But the Beta FPV 1102-22000s are actually really, really good. So I feel pretty comfortable recommending those. Um, 1102 is a big motor. Uh, I'm hoping that the 1002 RC and powers will give me the same amount of power. I've heard from people that I trust that they don't make quite as much power, which is going to drive me nuts. They're a little bit lighter, but they're not that much lighter. Um, I'm super interested in the RC in, in power 1003s, but I'm afraid that they're going to be too low of a KV. Um, I have a funny feeling that the VCI 0803s, which are 27,000 KV, are going to be the way to go. Um, the problem is uh, they're not available anywhere yet, and they only have one millimeter motor shafts. Uh, so, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. It doesn't appear that there's a perfect motor at the moment, but I'm really impressed by the Beta FPV 1102-22000s. Check out yesterday's live stream for a whole bunch of me talking about them and flight footage and, and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, Ethan W says, CID FPV or anyone, have you tried out the Tooth Fairy 2 3.5-inch frame? Uh, I'm going to put my 3-inch Cinewhoop on it so I can switch between it uh, being a Cinewhoop and a Freestyler. Very excited. Uh, Ethan, I have done many, many, many live streams about the Tooth Fairy 2. Uh, it is a, a great frame. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is it pretty much forces you to use an AIO. Um, I did initially build it with a 20 by 20 stack, and there's just, there's not enough deck height. Um, and there's nothing you can do about that because it uses uh, vertical carbon fiber camera plates. Uh, other than that though, I, I love this rig. This is actually one of my working rigs, as you can see by the FAA number on the bottom. Um, this is hands down the most versatile rig that I've got set up like this. Um, it technically doesn't have any externally rotating, um, uh, any things that can cut someone. So it's technically <laughs> sort of legal. Uh, I, I really do not fly this around people though. Uh, just because, like, yeah, this would hurt. Uh, but like this, it's got this really nice low profile sideways here. So if it's a windy day, uh, look, you have to balance flying something that's safe with flying something that you cannot hit someone with, right? Best case scenario is that you don't hit someone. So if it's super windy and you have to fly and the damn thing looks like a baby blender but you're not going to hit someone with it. In my opinion, that's a way better situation than flying someone that's going to get something that's going to get the shit kicked out of it by the wind and you're going to end up hitting someone with it, but it has full beautiful ducted prop protection, right? So, yeah. Let me uh, <laughs> there's my little uh there's me standing on a soapbox for a minute. Uh but yeah, uh 
I've got the, uh, so search my channel, go to my channel, use the little magnifying glass there, search for Tooth Fairy 2. There's tons of live streams. I've built it, I've rebuilt it, I've pulled it apart, I've had uh, the ducts on it, I've had the three inch arms on it, the, I think I've had the three and a half inch arms on it as well. Um, at the moment, and this is, this takes some doing, but this is, this is my favorite setup for it. These are the Cinewoop arms for it. The Cinewoop arms are big enough for a three and a half inch propeller, which is what this is. And then you can get these ridiculous guards and your FAA legal to some extent. Um, and these guards don't really wreck the performance. These guards will absolutely break if you crash this thing though. In this setup, it is not crashable. If it hits here, this guard will just snap this arm. It, it's These are one-time use guards. But hey, you know, FAA wants to put a rule in place and we gotta, we gotta have no externally rotating things that can lacerate. Uh, so yeah, Cinewoop arms and then but here's the thing, you're gonna have to cut these, uh, you're gonna, have, if, if you wanna run these guards, you're gonna have to cut them down a little bit. They'll hit with the Cinewoop arms in here. So you gotta just shave a bunch of carbon fiber off. Um, and then the other thing that I did is uh, I cut them really short in the front here. Usually there's there's more material here, but I cut this off because it shows up in the, um, this is my like backup, 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 backup rig for chasing the cyclists. I've never had to use it. I don't ever plan on using it. If I ever get to the point where the other rigs are all blown up and, and I need to use it, there'll be a serious conversation with with the, the guys that put on the event of like, I don't wanna fly this, but if you absolutely need me to, I guess I technically could. Um, but yeah, that's this setup. The, the Cinewoop arms, I can pull these off, put the ducts straight on, uh, the, the, uh, the HQ poured ducts from Stan FPV, uh, switch over to a two inch, uh, three inch propeller and, or I can take these off completely and fly it as is. And it flies like a freestyle rig. So yeah, super, super, super versatile. Um, I've got an Akon AIO in here, which is the only reason that I would ever dream of flying this thing professionally. Um, I just don't trust AIOs at all, but Akon makes really good stuff. So I am willing to put it up in the air, but, uh, yeah. Interesting rig, really cool frame. Uh, the other thing about this frame you wanna remember is there are no standoffs in the rear. It uses a Vista VTX as the rear standoffs. Um, I don't know if you can swap, like if, I don't know if you can do an O3, I don't know what other VTXs you can do in the rear of this thing, but just keep in mind that like, you really kind of can't build this analog. I guess you could, I guess you could run standoffs in the back. I don't know. Look, go on to uh, rotor builds. And if, if you're looking to run anything other than a Vista in the rear of this, go on to rotor builds and make sure that someone else has done it because this is really kind of specifically designed for the Vista in the rear. Um, so yeah, there you go, my friend. Like I said, loads and loads and loads of uh, live streams of me building that probably a bunch of flight footage as well. Uh, Jay Hines says, uh, for freestyling, cool. Then my answer stands. Um, although freestyling could mean anything that, that could mean tiny whoop. That could mean toothpick. That could mean big, heavy rig. Um, hell you could even freestyle one of the, one of the three inch cine whoops. Um, so yeah, that doesn't narrow it down, but the, the answer that I gave you covered sort of all the bases. Steve Jobs says, I asked Bardwell, but what is your opinion on balancing motors? I saw an old video of it being done with tape and a phone app. Uh, it's it's not worth it. Look, like we break motors so often um, that it's, don't spend time doing that. You're just end, gonna end up breaking the motor. And look, if, if you spend a whole bunch of time customizing a build, you're not gonna fly it hard because you're gonna, or you're gonna fly it hard once, you're gonna crash it, and then you're gonna realize what a nightmare it is to redo all of that custom work. Um, and flying hard is how you get better, and it's really, really fun. If you're not crashing, um, start. Uh, the replacement parts in this hobby are very inexpensive compared to pretty much every other hobby um, where you can have this much sort of fun and with technology. Um, you're gonna get better, and that feels really good. 
And yeah, it's just like a super bonus of this hobby is that you can ram these things into a brick wall at 80 miles an hour and get that experience as if you did it yourself, but get in your car and drive home, not dead. Um, so yeah, crashing is, in my opinion, a, a beautiful part about this hobby. You can fix them for cheap. You can fix them in, in your house, not in your garage, bash, punching metal. Um, it's, it's the perfect scenario. This hobby, it's one of the beautiful things about FPV. Uh, Stryker says, also thoughts on the Quadmula F35 split? I'm in between that and the Volador 3.5. Any other suggestions? Um, I personally don't like 3.5 inch rigs. That Those propellers are too big for a rig that's going to be like 250, 260, 270 grams. Um, for me, three and a half inch rigs only really fly right when they're up at like 310, 320 grams. And at that point, like it's not even close to being sub 250. So, you know, you're, it's a little sketchy there. And I don't know, like at that point, you kind of might as well go up to a five inch rig. So for me, it's, it's three inch, like three inch is the right propeller size for 250 grams, 240 grams. Um, and yeah, you could technically run three inch props on that rig. I know the Quadmula F35 is the only Quadmula in stock right now. Um, that's, in that three inch range, all of their three inch rigs are out of stock, but apparently they're coming back soon. Um, and the gin two and a half inch is in stock. Uh, but yeah, Volador 3.5. I don't know. It, it seems maybe okay. It's unbelievably heavy, but I think a lot of that weight is the absurd amount of TPU that they seem to give you with it. Um, so without all that TPU, it's probably a little bit more realistic between those two. I would definitely go with the Quadmilla. Um, but Personally, I'm waiting for the Siren F3 to come back, and I think you should too. Uh, J Deeg says, might be obviously, but refragging your hard drive should help a lot as well. I can explain more if you want. Um, you know, I haven't done that in forever. Uh, on Max, Disk Utility will do it. I don't know. I, I have an app that will do it. Um, I don't think that's the problem, though, because... It's a, it's a hard drive spinning down issue. Um, in the research that I've done, I've found hundreds and hundreds of people that are having the same issue. Um, and yeah, we talked about it on the stream yesterday a bunch. Uh, the only real solution that I've found is this program called Amphetamine, which I have been running, um, but I haven't had the... Um, uh, in Amphetamine, there's a... Um, what the hell is it called? drive alive that, that keeps the hard drives from spinning down. I haven't had that turned on. I just turned it on yesterday after the stream. Um, and so, yeah, we'll see. See how it goes. Denzel the Terrible says, use spinners for only archive working on something, put it on SSD. Um, yeah, I, I... That is the right answer. The problem is, at the beginning of every live stream, I get pretty random with, like, the flight footage that I want to play, and... I don't, and, and I've got, you know, Christ, six, seven, eight terabytes of flight footage. So to buy a, an SSD that's that big, it would cost $11 billion, which I don't have. Um, and so, yeah, like, and then like, so like, yeah, w when I'm editing a project, sure, it's it's easy to drop it onto an SSD drive. Although the, the, the SSD drive right now is almost completely filled. Um, I have another ssd here that i need to get into an enclosure um which will give me another terabyte yeah so this will help but i can't keep all the flight footage on this and like constantly moving back and shit back and forth would drive me mad um so yeah that is the right answer though uh biochi i haven't seen you in a while brother how you been uh, he says, did you see the HDLRC Spectre 10 amp 1 to 2 S ELRS AO VTX 400 milliwatt F411 flight control 10 amp BL Heli S 5 in 1 flight controller uh, option for 75 millimeter? Uh, HDLRC is one of the few companies who seem to have always made trash. <laughs> um, early days in FPV, I had a lot of HDLRC stuff literally catch on fire. Um, every once in a while, I'll check their stuff out again, and it's consistently shit. Uh, that AIO, 
a week or two ago, somebody commented on one of these live streams. Yo, I think I found your answer. HDLC made this new AIO. I'm trying it out now. Uh, I actually ordered a second one. Um, he's like, I, I think it's going to be really good. I was like, oh, awesome. I love that. Uh, a day or two later, he replies and says, well, the one blew up right out of the box and the other one failed after three batteries. So, um, HDLRC has still got it. They're, they've they've not changed their ways, which, you know, I would rather them not change their ways. I'd rather them just forever make trash so that I can just always say, like, yep, you want some garbage? There you go. Guaranteed trash. I'm sure some of the stuff that they make is not garbage, but um, they are one of the few companies that I've seen consistently putting out stuff that is just junk. Um, so, yeah, for the love of God, in my opinion, stay away from HDLRC. There are plenty of other companies that are making stuff that doesn't have nearly as bad of a failure rate for us to go with. So, yeah, stay away from HDLRC as far as I'm concerned. Um, but, again, I'm sure that they don't make only trash. Apparently, they've got a 2-inch uh, Tiny Whoop frame that's really, really durable, which is amazing. But I will not touch their electronics. Uh, Bob Bruce says, I got them motors, LOL. Uh, which motors? That was at 1018. Oh God, that was like 40 minutes ago. I don't know what we were talking about then. Sorry, dude. CMYK says, uh, what those VTI Spark 0702 29,000s do? I see them up on Wrecked. Uh, yeah, I'm talking to VCI about those 0702s as well. We'll see. I just want to buy them. The, the, I'm not asking them to change anything about the 0702s. I just want to try them. I just want to see what their, another company's 0702 at 29,000 KV is like. Um, I'm really curious about the strength of the motor shafts, actually. Um, more than one person has said that one millimeter motor shafts not made by Happy Model are actually strong enough for crashing. Most people don't crash like I crash, though, so I don't know about that. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I really want to try it. I really want to find out. Uh... KVFPV says, have you seen slash tried the Eco yet? Um, I have not either. I've not seen it or tried it, and I probably won't. Um, there's really nothing groundbreaking about it compared to the old um, HD0 setup in terms of what I would improve. The the old HD0 setup, the, the, the thing that the, that the Eco improves on, of course, is the cost, right? That's obviously very important, but... Um, take cost out of the equation. Um, the only real improvement of the Eco is that it doesn't use the MIPI cable, which apparently some people say they've had issues with uh, durability on. I have not. I've used MIPI cables for like the last three or four years, and I've not really had any issues with them. Um, I, I'm sure I've had one issue, maybe two, but it's not like a recurring thing. Um, and so, yeah, like it's really not much lighter, which is the biggest thing, right? Like if the HD zero eco was lighter, I would probably give it a try, but it's not significantly lighter than the, the old school HD zero setup, which I have tried and the image quality is not good enough. Um, the, 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 the signal strength basically is, is not good enough either. Um, Essentially, like if Walksnail didn't exist, I'd be all over this. But for one extra gram, uh, this is the old setup. This is not the Eco. Uh, for one extra gram, you can run the Walksnail light setup, which has infinitely better image quality, infinitely better signal. Um, and yeah, the penalty you pay is latency. I'm not a racer. And so the latency doesn't matter to me. As far as I'm concerned, though, the extra weight that you're going to add from HD0 to a Tiny Whoop is going to make it completely uncompetitive for racing, unless it's like a spec racing series where you have to run HD0, which I haven't heard of yet, but would be very cool. So, yeah, it's in this kind of awkward middle ground where it's like, I can't think of a single reason to use it, unfortunately. Um, I love that it exists, as I always say. And for some people, it's the perfect product. Uh, but for me, it's like weirdly the perfectly wrong product, which drives me nuts because I have the HD0 goggles and I have the, the setup, but 
I just I can't justify putting time into doing the build and flying it and reviewing it because I already have. I've already run HD zero, and I don't like it. Um, and I'm not just going to magically now like it. In fact, I'm going to like it less because of how much I've fallen in love with walks now um, on on this guy and on this guy. And um, so, yeah, I'm not the right person for HD zero. But if you are, I'm actually very jealous um, because like the people that love HD zero, like, man, that's it. That's that's awesome. It's a great system. Those guys are awesome. It just doesn't for me. It just doesn't check the correct boxes. Um so yeah, there's my stance on HD zero. I, I I really I hate myself for not loving HD zero, but I'm not gonna like yeah I'm I'm just I'm I I've worked really hard over the years to just like throw out the placebo and just be able to like not have placebo enter the chat, um, and when I do that, sometimes certain products that I want to love, uh, I don't love. So yeah, Morton Upshot says yes, Motor Two, uh, but I saw it while I was diving. Um, so yeah, take Motor Two and move it somewhere else, and then do a bunch more dives over grass and see if you can reproduce the behavior. Striker says I flew for the first time a few months ago on my friend's Baby Hawk Two. Flew it pretty well, but I discovered ground effect for the first time and couldn't pull out of a dive. Uh, prop exploded and I, uh, and I found it now eight months after. Yeah, it's it, it, you'll it, it's funny, man. If you fly a spot a bunch of times and lose propellers, you'll always eventually find those propellers. It's hysterical. Um, people for the rest of time will be finding our propellers since they're made out of plastic. Striker says pieces of it. Uh, Yevin says I think you missed these props when you said I wish we have forty millimeter tri blade lightweight props. Newbie drone Azzy. Uh, micro propeller, 45 millimeter, uh, one and a half millimeter shaft. Weight is only 0.28 grams. Um, what I didn't say, wh what what I said in my head, but I didn't say out loud, is that I wish we had 40 millimeter tri blade lightweight props that are durable. Uh, the Nubi Drone Azzy props fly amazing, mainly because they're very lightweight, but they are incredibly fragile. Um, a lot of times when I'm putting the propeller on they're so fragile that I'll bend a blade and then it's hard to bend the blade back perfectly. Um, so the propeller will vibrate and go crazy. Um, if I do manage to get the propellers on without bending the blades all up, uh, two things, th the worst thing that happens is that the, they've got this design on the hub with like an outer ring and then a couple of supports and then an inner ring. And what'll happen, even if you're not flying the rig, I've had rigs j that just sit on the shelf the, the inner uh, diameter of the inner plastic is really, really tight. So when you put it on the motor shaft, um, if you just let it sit on the shelf, it'll actually break the plastic. The solution is to get a 0.99 millimeter or and or 1.5 millimeter drill bit and drill the propeller out. But then the propeller is just super fragile all the time when you're actually flying it. Um, so yeah, th those propellers are just infinitely fragile. Man, do they fly great. Um, if you're interested in getting yourself a one and a half millimeter and a 0.99 millimeter drill bit with a fancy little pin vise like this, I have four more for sale. It's 40 bucks. Uh, you're gonna use the PayPal link over on CIDFPV.com and yeah, you'll be able to start drilling your propellers out. Basically, every time you're about to put a tiny whoop propeller onto a motor, you just Throw it under the pin vise here, spin this little guy in your hand, and once the propeller gets on, you pull it back out and you've removed just a tiny little bit of material. You're gonna start to push the propeller under the motor. If you have to start really pushing on it, stop. Take the propeller back off, hit it again. Take a little bit more material off, try again. Eventually you'll get your props to the point where you, you have to put some pressure on them, but you don't have to put a ton of pressure on them. Um, that's going to save your fingers when you have to remove them. It's also going to save your motor bells. The biggest problem that we have with tiny whoop motors is the connection between the motor shaft and the motor bell. And if you're spinning your propellers to get them off, you are wrecking that connection there and you will absolutely ruin that motor after you've removed 10, 15, 20 different propellers. And a new set of motors costs 40 bucks. So spend the 40 bucks on a pin vise with the drill bits that you need, stop wrecking your motors. When the motor starts to go, when that motor shaft starts to spin on the bell, 
it's hard to notice and the the rig will start acting really funny because the magnets are in the bell so the the motor is driving the bell but then the motor shaft with the propeller are going a little bit slower and like it's not immediately obvious it's super annoying and then eventually it'll let go all the way and if that happens somewhere unrecoverable you just lost a hell of a lot more than 40 bucks so um I, man, I have been through it with Tiny Whoop motors and propellers uh, over the last seven plus years. And um, I've got both of the prop poppers. Um, for a long time, I used this really effective, actually, uh, Weeha chip lifter, which actually does a really decent job removing the propellers without ruining the motors. Um, I've got... Uh, I've realized that this drawer liner material is really good to hold the bell. Like I have tried it all to try to get Tiny Whoop motors and propellers to get up, get inside of each other and then get out of each other safely. Um, and a pin vise with a 0.99 millimeter drill bit and a 1.5 millimeter drill bit is hands down the best way of doing it. Um, the prop poppers are great, don't get me wrong, but they're not the solution. If if you are jamming a propeller onto one of these little ass motors with any significant amount of, you know, gorilla handed force, you're going to ruin that motor. I guarantee it. Not right now, but eventually you're going to ruin that motor. And then you're going to have to buy four new ones for 40 something dollars. So, uh, yeah, start drilling your propellers out, friends. Uh, look, if, if I don't like doing it, I wish there was an easier way to do it, but well, there is, there are easier ways to do it, but they're not as good. And and yeah, I've I've ruined 20, 25 motors over the years because of this. Um, and so yeah, the right drill bits are are just what you need. Uh, oh my God, I'm super far behind on chat. All right, I gotta try to go fast. Upside says today today's whoop peeve uh, was every analog cam doesn't fit. And every canopy, uh, uh, but can't can't be true. But F companies having different standards. Um, yeah, the cameras don't fit anywhere. The other problem is they all have different uh, connectors on them. It's 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 a mess. Morton Upshot says uh, my daughter's cat turned feral just before uh, just before totality. Go easy on the little guy. Yeah, I've heard that. Apparently during eclipses, animals get very weirded out. Um, that's crazy. Animals are so in tuned, man. So in tuned. Cole Power says JP Spin FPV is on to something. Your thumbnail needs more Teddy dog bait for clicks. I know I did the one. I did like one thumbnail with him. Um, I need to do it again. Uh, BLD 0550 with a five dollar super chat. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, he says, "What are your thoughts on the Gep RC Cinelog 20?" I really don't like any of that style of rig. Uh, mainly because they force you to use an AIO and AIOs can go to hell as far as I'm concerned. Um, I also don't like these rigs with prop guards. Why won't this open? What is happening? Am I not clicking right? Is, is there a different way of clicking? There it goes. Uh, yeah, so th these rigs with these prop guards, right? They're not ducts, they're prop guards. In my opinion, they're not safe to fly around people. And for something that's this big, if you're gonna run prop guards on it, you're gonna you're running the prop guards to fly it around people, right? Like my, my main complaint is that the propeller is so opened on the bottom, right? Like if you're if you're flying over people or uh, like you drop down on somebody like you're going to just blend them up like it's it's just you you want the guard on the bottom if if you're going to run a guard like this you want to have those the the struts that protect it on the bottom um and so yeah it's not safe to fly around people and so if you're not going to fly it around people take the guards off it's going to fly way better without the guards on what some people argue which is true is that with the guards on it flies slower and and cool i get that but when you fly it slower, you're flying it like a Cinewhoop. And you fly Cinewhoops around people. Normally, not always. If, if you have like some specific situation where 
you want it to fly slow and there's not going to be any people around. Amazing. That's what I think these things are kind of for. Um, but yeah, I have a hard time with them. Um, the Here's what I can tell you about the, the two inch version of this rig is that it's, it's rough, dude. Like it's unbelievably loud. All right. So look, you can see it right in here. So you've got a two inch propeller, which is already rel relatively small. And then you've got this blocking the thrust, this blocking the thrust, this blocking, this blocking, this blocking, this blocking, and then all of this. So think about this, right? You've got a two inch propeller, but then you're blocking all this shit. So you've basically gone from like a two inch propeller down to like a one and a half or maybe even less inch propeller because of how much is blocking where it's going to be pulling air in from. And the where these things pull air in from is just as important as where they push air out of. Um, so these two inch rigs like this, because of all that, they're super loud because it's a horrible aerodynamic situation, right? And noise occurs when there's turbulent air and where moving air meets not moving air. And with all that shit there, you've got a lot of non-moving air and then a lot of moving air. So it's just horrendously loud. Um, they're also super inefficient because of all that, right? So you get terrible runtime. They're obnoxiously loud. The flight performance kind of sucks because they don't have much thrust because of all the blockages, right? So it's just like there's all these things that these two-inch rigs have a problem with. But what they are good for is that it's as light as you can possibly build a rig to carry a GoPro or to carry O3, right? Like, so th there's... If you just want the lightest possible solution, and lightweight means that it's going to corner really well, it's going to drive around like an RC car, versus like as you get heavier, when you turn, they want to slide, right? So this rig is going to be ultra accurate because it's going to just track perfectly straight all the time. But there are some serious downsides to that. So this rig is a very specific tool for a very specific job, in my opinion. No people around, super accurate, like shooting tight gaps over and over and over again, like doing something like repeatable uh, in a situation where everyone's deaf and the runtime doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, that's what I think about the Cinelog 20. Um, even just jumping up from the 20 to the 25 has a massive improvement in runtime efficiency, uh, efficiency is runtime, um, flight performance, thrust, uh, so yeah, for most people, the 25 is where you want to start. The, the 20 is just such a specific kind of, uh, scalpel, um, for a specific job. Um, so yeah, or jump all the way up to the 30 and now you start to get really good performance. Although if you're going to jump up to a 30, uh, a, a three inch style rig, I think that you should go to, um, a proper Cinewhoop with proper guards so that you can fly around people without hurting someone and, and being that guy that ruined it for everybody. Um, but that's just me. I, I, I take safety ultra seriously. Um, speaking of safety, uh, what an amazing segue. So this doesn't have propellers on it. And the reason why is that I have found that eventually, so like with Cinewhoops, right? We don't crash, typically, and if we do crash, we don't hurt the propellers. So, with a Cinewhoop, you can potentially have a set of propellers on there for years, literally years. And what you will maybe eventually realize is that after a propeller has been on a rig for years, even if you haven't crashed it, that propeller will eventually explode. Um, somebody talked about this forever ago. It might've been Ryan Harrell. Um, propellers have a lifespan. They are made of plastic. And when we go full throttle, uh, they bend and, and they eventually fatigue. And so every once in a while, change the propellers out on your Cinewhoop. I did it relatively recently, but I do it all the time. I, I, I have a ton of of these um, Gemfan D76 five-bladed three-inch props. Um, and so, yeah, 
every so often I, I just force myself, even though I probably don't need to, uh, to swap the propellers out on my Cinewhoops, and I decided to do it today. So yeah, if you've got a Cinewhoop, and you can't remember the last time you changed the props on it, change the props on it. Now. Like, like go do it now. Uh, because when a propeller explodes, it sucks. <laughs> Uh, because it comes to, and I did not have that happen. Uh, when I was, uh, when I was in Florida visiting my parents, a uh, year, maybe two years ago, uh, was when it happened. I, I, I took it off over grass and the propeller, the, the props were making a, a funny noise. And I was like, what the hell? So I dropped it really low on the grass and I did a couple of full throttle stabs to really kind of work the propellers. And one of them just blew, just completely blew up. And I was like, what the hell was that about? And, I'm, and, I, and, and so, you know, on that trip, I had lots of time to kind of think about it. And after thinking about it, I was like, man, I, I've not crashed this thing. Like, there's absolutely no reason for that propeller to have done that. And then for some reason, I remembered back to... Actually, it's Mark Spatz. It was Mark Spatz. Uh, ages ago, he did uh, he did a bunch of black box logs on different propellers and found that there were certain propellers that were better balanced than others. Um, and he put a video up about it. And at some point in that video, or maybe when I was talking to him at some point uh, after that video, uh, he had also tested propellers that he'd run a bunch like he would just used didn't crash them but he'd had them on a rig uh and he found that those propellers were uh significantly less balanced than a fresh set and his theory was that yeah when we go full throttle these props bend and plastic fatigues over a while and th that's kind of the only thing that he could think of uh and so, yeah, I, I sort of connected the dots on that. And uh, yeah, you should too. I mean, for the most part, like if you have a rig on old ass propellers that you've flown a bunch of batteries on that you don't remember the last time you've changed them, change them. Props are cheap. And uh, when they go boom, your entire rig comes tumbling down. And uh, the second that you lose an entire build because the propellers exploded for no reason, seemingly no reason, uh, you're going to be pissed. And I'm going to be pissed for you. So here's your warning. Change them props. Yo. Cool. I specifically didn't put the fresh propellers on here because I wanted to remind myself to talk about that on the stream. There's like, in the course of a day, I, I come up with all these good ideas. And like, I used to be good about writing them down. Uh, I'm not good about writing them down anymore. Um, so what I'll, what I'll do is I'll leave quads in like a little on deck circle area that I've got, um, to remind me to, uh, to talk to you guys about it and, or do some of the work that needs to be done on them while I'm reading through the chat. Uh, BLD, thank you again for the super chat. Hopefully I helped you, uh, in your quest to get a, uh, potentially get a GEPRC Cinelog. Uh, here's the last thing I will say, check out the Foxier... Fox whoop? Yeah, Foxy or Fox whoop. The, uh, the prop guards, uh, sorry, they're not prop guards. The, no, they are prop guards. They're not ducks. The prop guards that they use, they say that they're indestructible. Um, I have seen crashes that have been so hard and they haven't broken that unbelievably I would kind of maybe agree with them. Uh, the Gep RC Cinelog is tough, but it's not indestructible tough. Uh, so yeah, check out the, uh, the Foxy or Fox Whoop. They don't even make it in a two inch cause they know that it's going to be a nightmare. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Uh, Striker says baby ape two is the three and a half inch 4s. Ah, okay. Uh, well then, and, and you said it's, it's flying like crap. So, uh, that would kind of make sense. The, the baby apes are super budget. Nah, it's going to drive somebody insane. You do it below the desk, it'll be a little quieter. Um, the, the motors that they use on those baby apes are, uh, junk. 
so yeah, hopefully the ESC can handle bigger motors. Uh, putting bigger motors on it should solve your your problem. Either bigger or just higher KV. Look, if it's a three and a half inch rig, the smallest motor that you want to put on it and a great option is the T-Motor 1404 4500 KV motor. That is the king of the 1404s. It's a phenomenal motor um, and it should pick up that payload with no serious drama. Uh, so that's the route that I would go. I don't have OBS up. Martin Tanley with a subscription. Thanks, brother. Welcome to the club. Uh, Stephen Woodruff says, are there any 3D printing services that do TPU? I'm prototyping a 25 by 25 canopy with a GoPro style mount. I don't know, but the amazing community of people that watch this live stream, many of the amazing community that we've got here uh, have 3D printers and they are very generous about 3D printing things for other people in this cool little community. So head on over to my Discord. There's a link in... Uh, uh, on my website, cidfpv.com. And I actually have a text channel on my Discord for 3D printing. Go in there. And uh, yeah, I bet you somebody will uh, will hook you up. Pay for the shipping at the very least. And maybe, you know, kick them a couple extra dollars for their time. And for TPU. TPU is not cheap. I, I, I did not know uh, how expensive it was. Um, so yeah, make it worth their while. And then they'll, they'll want to do it for you forever too, right? That's the... Uh, the nice side effect of that. So there you go, fresh propellers on the uh, on the working rig. CMYK leaving the CIDFPV.com link in the chat. Thank you, brother. Striker says, uh, "I do love me a quad mula frame." Yeah, I haven't had one yet, but I've seen a bunch of them and they're really nice. Uh, hit myself several times with an open prop three and a half inch. Uh, I trust it with my life. Yeah, uh, sub-250 rigs, man, even at full steam, they're, I mean, don't hit yourself in the face, but, like, yeah, it's not that bad. It doesn't tickle, but... Upside says, is there a link for the bat butt holio or still R&D stage? <laughs> Cheers, thanks for the stream, always. <laughs> That's a very weird autocorrect. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what a... What I'm assuming that he's talking about is the bat wing mount. Uh, and it's not done yet. We're, uh, Timmons actually messaged me today uh, asking like the final question about like the final thing. So yeah, very soon, very soon, very soon. Uh, Sixus One says, Cinewoops are quads? They are indeed. Quad motors, four. Upside says, on a help required now note, any tips to get a broken peak screw? Uh, out of an 0702. Uh, nope. And that right there is why I don't run the peak screws anymore. Um, is because when they break and they get stuck in the stator, it is a son of a bitch to get out. Uh, you can try like the tip of an X-Acto knife. You can also try like super gluing something to it. Um, that's like a, a, a car trick. Like you weld, if you've got a broken bolt, you can weld another bolt to it and then hopefully get it out. Um, so you can do that. I mean, what's the worst that happens? You ruin the motor that's already ruined, right? Because there's, because the, the thing is in there. So get medieval, get increasingly more medieval with it. And if, you know, if you end up ruining the motor while you're removing it, it was already ruined anyway, because you can't only run two screws in these motors. Uh, hey, my dad's in chat. He says, can't keep my eyes open. Gonna hit the rack. See tomorrow. Iron. Uh, yeah, my parents are coming or in Today's Monday? No, they stopped on the way. Uh, yeah, they get to Stone Mountain tomorrow. Um, and yeah, I get to see them for the first time in... since December. Uh, so I'm excited for that. Uh, Stryker says, I want to convert my Baby Ape 2 to the F35 split carry Insta360 Go 3, but uh, got me considering converting it to a 3-inch uh, with those T-motors. Um, if it's already set up for a 3.5-inch, run three inch propellers on it before you, you dive into changing the frame because you might not like the way three inch props are gonna give you less float than three and a half inch props. Some people don't like that, I do. Um, but yeah, buy the propellers first and see how you like it on three inch props just to make sure and then and then go down the rabbit hole. Uh, David 4 f says, thoughts on the Mobula 8 2S walk snail edition. I want a small outdoor walk snail flyer. Um, it's probably okay. 
Uh, 2S makes whoops so heavy, but I mean, you're going to fly it outside. So yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't really gone super far down the 2S tiny whoop rabbit hole other than the tiny lifter. Um, and then I also really haven't gone down the two inch tiny whoop rabbit hole. Uh, there's an awful lot of duct in view for me, um, which is why I've always kind of stayed away from them. Um, it's probably really good though. I I'm sure there's a bunch of reviews on it here on YouTube of people that actually have them and fly them around, you know, careful of the reviewers. If, if, if the reviewer says it's the best thing ever, and then you go to their channel and every single thumbnail says that every single product that they test is the best thing ever. Don't watch that review because you know, if everything is the best, how is that possible? Uh, look for somebody that's critical of, of the product uh, and, and look for someone that's a good pilot as well. Uh, those are the two big things. If you can find a review from a pilot that's be hopefully better than you, right? Like that's, that's really ideal. Um, even better, like actually like really good. Um, and they're willing to like talk about the bad parts of it because there's always bad parts of every single one of these rigs that's who you want to be listening to uh zach says something youtube didn't want me to read it it uh scrolled me to the bottom of the chat for absolutely no reason as it does seven thousand times per live stream zach says uh just built a 75 millimeter with the hc0 eco most significant dis difference is that the eco camera fits a mobula 6 canopy that's really nice. I didn't know that. That's really, really nice. Also, the included antenna is the best linear antenna I've seen to date. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, look, if, if you're going to get HD0, there's no reason to not get the HD0 Eco, right? Like, it's just, I don't think you should get HD0. <laughs> but that's just me. Again, that's just me. Disabled Combat Android, sa Combat Android says, uh, let's normalize Tiny Whoop uh, Motors. Oh, yeah, brother. Let's normalize Tiny Whoop Motors being sold in sets of five. Four is so annoying. Yeah, man, I, I've said for the longest time, guys, never buy four motors. Always buy five motors. Um, I would love that. Uh, next time I talk to Jesse, I, I, I might actually mention that. I, they would have to redo all of their packaging, they being happy models, so it's it's never going to happen. But uh, I, I, I hope I remember um, so that I can just... Yeah, get that thought into into his brain. Martin Tanley, uh, when you at me, make sure you do Ciati FPV, no space in between. I, I just happened to see it, but it didn't light up an orange because you put the space in between the two. Um, uh, Martin Tanley says, uh, you seem like a flyer bred for great latency. Uh, thought HD0 offered the best of that. Uh, does Walksnail feel close enough for you when freestyling with the extra fidelity? Absolutely not. Um, my least favorite thing about walk snail is the latency. And I don't know if I'm going to put the, the, the walk snail 65 millimeter freestyle rig back together because of it. Um, on the 40,000 KV 702s, it flew really decent, but I flew like shit with it. <laughs> A, because of the weight, for sure. The, the extra weight makes it just carry its momentum all over the damn place. But there would be situations where I would hear it hit something in the basement here. And in, in my view, I swear to God, I was, I was still not hitting the thing. The, there would be times that I would hit something head on that I would see, like the coffee table. I would see the coffee table and like it would be like... You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know if that's actually possible because the latency is pretty low and and human beings reaction time, I think, is like a quarter of a second in the best case scenario. I'm about to be 43, so I'm sure that I'm slower than that. What I think it actually is, is that I've flown so much ultra low latency analog that there's an expectation burned into my brain of when I should hear the smack and when I should see the collision. And then so anything slower than that, I'm, my brain is like, yeah, yeah, I can I can see it before I hear it. Um, but yeah, uh, for freestyle inside the house, I don't know about walk snail. If the 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 quality of the video is is absurd and it's great and I love it and, and that's all great. But look, 
Freestyle flying is not about the quality of the video. It's about how good of a pilot you are. So fuck it. Fly analog five inch. Don't do that. But um, yeah, and an analog tiny whoop at 17 point something grams doing gnarly shit is going to be way more watchable than a rig that's six grams heavier lumbering its fat ass around the room, not doing nearly as gnarly stuff, but you can see the not so gnarly stuff that you're doing a lot better. You know what I mean? Um, 70, I'm, I'm, I'm going hard on the 75 millimeter freestyle thing because with walk snail, because when you go outside inside the house, doing all the crazy shit you see me doing, like it's, it's just like everything happens so fast. You, you have to like, you have to chop the throttle perfectly for the for the power loop to get through the gates and then you have to be right back on it and then throw it over here to dive the triple gate thing like everything happens so fast you like one of the biggest challenges to flying fully like three-dimensional hardcore freestyle in the house is increasing your speed in your brain this is it's funny this is something this is one of the things one of the hardest things to teach back in the days that I was at the racetrack every week at weekend as an instructor driving on the street, people pass cars with a closing speed of like five or 10 or maybe 15 miles an hour if you're an idiot. And so your brain is wired to process things coming at you when you're driving a car at five to 10 to 15 miles an hour. Then you get to the racetrack, even more specifically at autocross, where you've got a lot of gates and a lot of cones coming at you. And these cones are coming at you at 30 and 40 and 50 and 60 and 70 miles an hour. And one of the hardest things for me to teach my students was how to just speed their brain up. And and like one of the ways I would tell them like, hey, when you're driving, like all the time when you're driving, pick things out on the road surface. Like pick out the, the reflector, pick out the, the mailbox, pick out every possible thing that you can that's static and just get used to quickly locking onto that and then tracking it with your peripheral vision. And and what and and that would eventually speed their brains up and and like, you know, it's like overclocking your CPU. Flying tiny whoops in the house and doing nuts freestyle stuff, that's the hardest part. It's forcing your brain to overclock and it's also breaking yourself out of the pacing that you have when you're flying outside. Your pacing outside is way slower and way more floaty and and just yeah and and you you have to deprogram that to really be able to do the, the that's been the hardest thing for me and and it's and i can feel myself needing to adjust when i fly bigger stuff outside um so yeah that's uh with the 75 millimeter rig being outside at the jungle gyms i'm hoping that the latency won't bother me as much but I don't know because things happen really fast when you're flying these things in the jungle gyms, almost as fast as inside the house because jungle gyms are roughly the size of this room, probably smaller even. So I don't really know, but like the really nice image quality outside is even like more kind of magic, right? Cause you've got like sunsets and shit like that going on. Um, but I don't know that there is a chance that at the end of all of this testing, um, and it's actually a pretty good chance that I tear all of the freestyle walks. I mean, I'm not, I don't think I'm rebuilding the 65. I might end up tearing down the walk snail 75 uh, millimeter freestyle rigs and just making cinematic rigs with them. It's really starting to feel like any of these HD systems on tiny whoops are just little miniature cine whoops. Um, and if you want to fly proper freestyle, it's analog when it comes to these tiny little rigs because of the massive weight penalty. Um, but I'm trying really hard because it would be really, really, really cool to have a durable, pro like good flying jungle gym basher that you can then do other stuff with, right? Like freestyle in malls, freestyle in targets, freestyle the world with 1080, 60 frame per second video. Um, the other nail in the coffin with 65 is the runtime. Um, on the the you know these are the batteries that we have to run because they perform so much better um you're getting like less than two minutes of runtime with a 65 which 
you know, at the beginning of this live stream, you watched me fly this one at the at the uh, for the eclipse, and like that was shockingly decent. But at the very least, a 75 is going to fix the runtime issue, and the 75s running the 450 mAh batteries definitely fix the browning out situation. You can go full throttle on the 75s, and these batteries won't sag nearly as bad as the 300s. So there are a lot of things that make a 75 millimeter freestyle tiny whoop with walk snail much more realistic than a 65. Doing it as a 65 is like a, hey, look at me, like, like look what's possible kind of thing. And I don't really do that. I, I have rigs that have, that do a good job at their specific task. I don't keep rigs together that are just like, hey, look, this is the lightest weight tiny whoop ever built. I sneezed the other day and it fell apart, right? Like I build rigs to fly and to do a job. Um, and the, the 65 millimeter walk snail freestyle build doesn't do a good enough job at what it's meant for. I hope that makes sense. Uh, I am Ian Bennett says UV light also makes plastic very brittle if you're flying outside. Never thought about that. It's true. I mean, I, I think it takes a long time though, doesn't it? Uh, Yevin says I have a, I have 32 gram walk snail 40 millimeter, uh, with Azzy props, 1002s, but want to try 0802s. What do you think? Um, lots and lots and lots of content from the last couple of months doing, um, you said 40 millimeter. What's What's 40 millimeters? Is that 1.6 inch? Yeah, it's 1.6 inch. Yeah, lots and lots of content trying to make 802s work on these 40 millimeter, 1.6 inch uh, walk snail, tiny whoops. Uh, the motor is too small. If you want to fly it hard, if you just want to limp it around, it's okay. Uh, but the motors are too small, they overheat, and you lose power and efficiency. Uh, yeah yesterday's live stream check out my reaction to 1102s on that rig and i actually ah oh, yeah on yesterday's live stream i back to backed the 802 rig and the 1102 rig the 1102 rig got an entire extra minute of runtime um that alone is such a dra is such a perfect example of the fact that the 802s are um overheating and they're not the way to go on a on a big heavy 75 millimeter rig BLD0550 says, were you referring to the Foxy or Fox Whoop 25? Yep, that's the one. CMYK with the CIAPV.com link again. Thank you, dude. McMucus says, took the camera off my blown up Mobula 6 2024 AO, soldered wires with plugs on there, and it worked. Thanks for the soldering lessons. I'm getting good. Nice, brother. Uh, Morton Upshot says, I wonder if a hot needle let it cool. Oh, that's a good idea. And then back out for back it out for removing the nylon screw. That's a great idea. Great idea. Uh wow it's 11 30 already okay i actually have to try to go through the chat fast so we can do get anything done but i'm, I'm getting close quad um says do you have any, uh do me a favor uh, hold your uh, probably awesome question until uh the wednesday live stream because we need to dive into this uh uh, Quad um says, do you have any insight slash rumors if the shortage of the Mobula 6 2024 is still in effect? No idea whatsoever. None whatsoever. Striker says, uh, so this is the build, like I really don't. So this is the build plan so far. F35 split stack, Baby Ape 2, uh, X Nova 1804, FPV cycle 16. Um, uh, I don't know what an F35, oh, oh, that's the frame. Um, uh, stack from the Baby Ape, I don't know, the, the Baby Ape is an a super 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 budget rig i know it says it's a 35 amp 3 to 6s but super 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 budget stuff tends to not be super durable but i mean you know don't fly it unrecoverable for a while and make sure the stack isn't going to grenade x nova 1804 is a hell of a big motor but it's perfect for three and a half inch props um uh, fpv cycle 16 millimeter is an ultra notchy motor which has always made me really nervous about it so i would definitely go with the x nova over it um 600 milliwatt vtx uh it'll get you a little bit more range than 200 insta 360 go three yeah that'll rip that should rip for sure i mean bennett says uh you can attach the fifth motor to the back like a jeep or a crv <laughs> like a spare tire i like it striker says uh i might have to go to sleep i got school tomorrow uh kevin summer says reaction time is not perception time human perception of latency varies between people jb showed 
an application last summer to see what level of latency you can feel. Yeah, you know, do, um, they have tests you can take, right? For uh, like FPV, uh, FPV, uh, first person shooters, there's like training and shit you can do to get better at first person shooters. And I think there's tests to where you can check your, um, uh, your perception or whatever. Um, yeah, good call, Kevin. That's right. I, I always refer back to reaction time because of just cars, right? Like reaction time is, is a big f bunch of years that I was into cars. Um, and so, yeah, the, the tree is tuned to a quarter of a second. If it's a pro tree, uh, let's not talk about cars. Uh, but yeah, thank you for that reminder. I, I, I always forget about that. I always forget, um, that our perception of latency is, is way more variable than just raw reaction time. Curtis Hayes says, what AIO does your tiny lifter use? Uh, and do you put two BT 2.0 batteries in series or two S in parallel? I forget what it, I forget what the difference is between series and parallel. I forget which one's which basically I know what the difference is, but I have them so that it's running two S it's not running one S. Um, the AIO is the newbie drone BLV three, which you can unfortunately no longer get the BLV four does not work right. Uh, when you run it 2s so unfortunately you kind of can't build a tiny lifter anymore um, I have three of those AIOs when they're all dead that's kind of the end of the tiny lifter um, unless I I guess I could maybe go to an X no I can't go to an X12 because then that frame won't work yeah I don't know uh, when the, when I blow up both of the all three of those AIOs I'll figure something out maybe um, uh, but yeah, I needed the uh, I needed it to be 2s to get enough RPM and power out of the motors uh, to pick up the Insta 362. It, it's a heavy son of a bitch for a 1.6 inch propeller rig. Quad 66 is in the house. What's up, homie? Uh, Steve Jobs said, uh, "If you guys are not subscribed to Quad 66's channel, you're doing it wrong. Get yourself over there and subscribe." Excellent content creator, super cool dude, amazing pilot, uh, and doing God's work with some black box testing of Tiny Whoop stuff. Uh, can you, uh, Steve Jobs says, can you use 0702 on 65 millimeter, uh, with HD zero? Uh, yes. Uh, and you want to, if you're going to put digital onto a 65 millimeter rig, you need to save weight everywhere else you possibly can. So what you want are 702, 36,000 KV motors at the very least, uh, 702, 32,000 KV motors. Uh, I really liked it when I put the 702 40,000 KV motors on, uh, but still I pulled that, th I, I pulled that thing apart. Uh, and I, I don't think it's going back together. Uh, Oh, I'm almost caught up. Kevin Sumner says Mobile 6 2024 shortage is a shortage of FC components. Happy models prior prioritizing Mobile 6 shipments. Flight controller alone will be later confirmed through multiple vendors and Jason. Thank you for that. Kevin Sumner. Uh, off axis, put in the, uh, CIDFPV.com link in the chat. Thank you, dude. Striker says, have a good night. Uh, thanks for all the help. You're certainly welcome. Uh, I actually have school tomorrow. Sucks to be you, but it's even worse when you get older and you don't have school tomorrow. So enjoy it now. All right. Caught up. Here we go. Let's build an indestructible tiny whoop that you can't build. <laughs> you can't get these motors. Even if you could get these motors, it would cost you $80 to piece these motors together. You can't get this AIO. You can't get any AIOs right now. Uh, I'm tempted to put the hooks forward so that I can run the bat wing camera mount at some point. But to be totally honest, this rig's... I was about to say this rig is probably going to come apart sooner than later. But maybe not because this AIO is on its way out. Um... And I have a whole bunch of these frames. These motors are going to end up on an analog 75 millimeter jungle gym basher, but I could, maybe I will leave this thing together. Yeah. Okay. I'll put another set of motors with one and a half millimeter motor shafts on it. Uh, yeah. What the hell? I'll leave this thing together. I'll at least leave this AIO in this frame and this AIO will never be anything other than a basher AIO and the bat wing mount. Oh, could this be my, I want to durability test that some cameras in the bat wing mount. And so this might be 
that. This might be the, the, the durability testing platform. I'm gonna run the hooks in the front. I hate the way it looks with the hooks in the front, uh, but for the purpose of not having to take it apart in the future. Oh wait, you know what? I have to pull the I have to pull this up. I have to pull the AIO up like this in order to plug the camera in down the road, which I will need to do if I switch this over to the to the Batwing camera mount. So yeah, I'm gonna put the hooks in the back because it looks better that way. <laughs> a big decision, man. We, we, we start with a really big decision. <laughs> oh, boy. The Hills Have FPV. There is a YouTube name. <laughs> Says, uh, motor connector versus direct solder make any difference? It does. It for sure does. Um, direct soldering is going to give you a little tiny bit more power, and it's going to be a little bit more efficient, but man, what a fucking pain in the ass it is to direct solder motors to these tiny whoops. Um, the main reason that I don't do it is that the amount of work that is required to, uh, look like having to, so, so you bang up a motor and you have to replace it on a tiny whoop with connectors. You're looking at like two minutes of work with direct with the motors direct soldered you're looking at at least 10 minutes realistically 15 or 20 minutes of work if i've got builds that every time i wreck a motor i'm looking at 15 or 20 minutes of work to replace just that one motor just for me to wreck another motor that you know 10 batteries later i'm not gonna fly that rig hard I've realized that in order for me to really just have zero mechanical sympathy, um, which is when you fly your best, always when you fly your best, or when your DVR is not recording, that's the other time you fly your best, um, the repair times have to be as low as possible. And, and so I've had rigs with direct soldered motors. I've had rigs that are just in one way or another, they're a pain in the ass to uh, repair or they're, they're just time consuming to repair. And I never get any good footage with those rigs because buried in the back of my mind is, man, I hope I don't smash into that. It's going to be a real pain in the ass to fix this one. Um, so yeah, for me, it, it kind of comes back to allowing myself and, and the, the, the difference in performance is not big enough to warrant, uh, doing it which is the other kind of big thing. You know, I've got all these tiny whoops that fly ridiculously good that all have motor connectors and they all get over three minutes of runtime. So like, why? Why would I create a whole bunch more work for myself um, just to, uh, yeah, just to get, I don't know, a small percentage of extra power or, or runtime or whatever. I don't need more power. I don't need more runtime. I don't need more efficiency. And so I'm not going to fix a problem that doesn't exist, right? Uh, for racers, no question. You have to direct solder your motors uh, because you're on the clock and because there is a real, there there is an actual performance advantage. Um, but for freestyle, the, like, the 40, you know, soon we're going to have access to 40,000 KV 702s. There is no one that a 40,000 KV motor does not have enough power for. So no matter what, we've got motors that have enough power, right? And then the whole runtime thing, like just buy one extra battery. One extra battery gives you three full minutes of extra flight time. And that's more that you're going to get from however many batteries you have now being direct soldered. Um, so yeah, for me, it's it's connectors for life. Uh, the, the motor shafts on these tiny whoop motors are pretty fragile. Uh, and they uh, and and they're pretty easy to bend. So you're gonna if, if you're gonna fly tiny whoops hard, you're gonna have to get used to replacing motors. It's just it's just something. That, uh, you know what? If you're gonna fly FPV hard, get used to replacing motors. It's 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 they are the the they take a lot of abuse and they have to be really well balanced. Uh, and so yeah, you you just it's just what you do. You replace motors in FPV, and anything you can do to make those motor replacements quicker and easier. Uh, is a good idea. 
Timmins with a $2 super chat. Thank you, homie. He says, Nano 3 Batwing Proto to Bob Noxious tomorrow. Very cool of you, man. Oh, God. You know, I actually... I actually need to bug him. Uh, sh shit sticks. Uh, it's called the... Raxus. Hey, actually... Uh, this is the Raxus, uh, I need to build one of these this week, uh, so I'm gonna need to, I'm actually gonna need to beg Bob Noxious to damn near overnight something for me. Um, thank you for saying that, dude, I, I needed that reminder, because, yeah, there's no, uh, camera mount in the box. Speaking of the Raxus, the reason why that reminded me to do mailbag is, that's this. Um, so this is the, uh, Raxus. It is a, uh, Q, uh, uh, Lumineer QAVS Freybot edition, basically. I forget what they called the, the Freybot edition is the old school one that I have. They, they revised it. Um, but this is that rig set up to hold an O3 and, uh, hopefully tomorrow my get FPV order finally gets here with an AOS Cinna. Uh, because that will have a camera mount, and I would kind of rather build that one first for this weekend's uh, uh, American Criterium Cup cycling race in Anniston that I'm going to. Uh, but this is my backup plan if that get FPV order does not show up tomorrow. Um, because, yet yeah, I did not know that this would not come with a way of mounting the camera. Um, on the, the, on the uh, Lumineer version of this, uh, there are carbon fiber camera mount plates. Um, I assume that there would also be those in this one, but there are not. Unless they're in between this. No, they're not in between this piece of cardboard. Um, so yeah, that's uh, my bad. And I'm a little bit worried right now. I, I, the, the, I could probably make something work. Um, I have camera mounts, but those are M2 standoffs, and I, I don't have camera might have camera mounts for m2 standoffs but i'm putting an o3 camera in there and that has a weird mounting situation so yeah i don't know i'll i'll probably figure something out but whatever i would still rather build the aos first because um uh it's more efficient it is way more fragile but it is more efficient um and yeah so there's that uh i also got a big ass box here with LED uh what are these called strip lights LED strip lights uh from Michael P also known as uh Mike Pilk and he sent these over for Rampage uh, at Ramp I, I set up uh, Micro Mayhem at Rampage and we do as many LED lights as we possibly can and uh, yeah, I was talking about LED strip lights and he was like, yo, he messaged me. He's like, yo, I have a whole bunch uh, that uh, at work, I think he said that I can just send you. And yeah, there's a shitload of them in here. And so, yeah, that's gonna be cool. Micro Mayhem is gonna be lit up even more this year than ever before because of these. I just have to figure out how I'm gonna power them, but Rampage isn't for a month or two. So uh, that is back burnered for the time being. Uh, but dude, Mike, thank you for sending those over. Holy crap, super, super, super generous. It's rad. Uh, and this is a box from RDQ with a bunch of stuff that I already opened up. I gotta, I gotta get through this quick. Um, one of the things that I'm really excited about are these ORT, uh, micro V antennas, very, very lightweight and they don't sacrifice the ground plane. Um, the, uh, the super, 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 super lightweight antennas that I showed you guys how to build, uh, recently are great and all for indoor stuff. But as soon as you go more than... 50, 60 feet away, you definitely can notice that there's, that you've fucked up the antenna, basically. Uh, I'm hoping that these micro V's are the answer. Um, so I snagged two of them and I can't wait to try them out. We'll do an antenna, uh, comparison in the future. Uh, Mobula 7 V4 clear frame. Mobula 7 V3 2S frame. Uh, I might play around with 2S in the future on these walk snail builds. We'll see. Uh, three... RC in power, 1003, uh, 22,000 KV motors. The fourth one will be coming from Pyrodrome. 
whenever I put that order in. Uh, I got five sets of the uh, Mobula 7 longer screws. If you're desperate for these, I bought extras so that you can get them. Uh, if for some reason you can't order from RDQ and I'm sending you a package and you need them, I can hook you up. RDQ battery strap, they always threw one of, it, threw one of those in. Uh, and a bunch of little 6S batteries on this 03 cyclist chasing rig. Uh, I am going to, I am running a 5 inch uh, ESC that will easily take 6S all day. So I'm going to play around with 6S motors to see, uh, 6S batteries to see if there is any additional um, uh, runtime that I get from them. Uh, this is a GNB 6S 550. I want to weigh these actually. I never believe the weights on websites. They're usually right, but uh, this is a GNB 6S 450. For the record, yes, this has RDQ stickers on it, but this is just a white labeled GNB battery. They're the same thing. Um, so I've got GNB 450, GNB 550, and <laughs> what the fuck is this about? <laughs> Why the hell is this so long? I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to cut this, and I'm gonna have to put a new XT30 on here. What, what the hell? Who? Why? What is it? Why? It's like, it's longer than a whole other battery. What is this? Why is it like that? What? Uh, R line six S five fifty. This, of course, is going to be the heaviest because this is like 10 grams of fucking wire here. Uh, the R-Line is 88.17 grams. Uh, the R-Line 550 is, let's just say 88. Uh, the GNB 550 is 85.7, call it 86. The GNB 450 is 80. Wow, that is not much lighter. Uh, all success. Testing coming at you. I'll let you know how it goes after this weekend. Nah, I'm going to test it before this weekend. Um, why? Why would you? Why? The hell? Uh, so there's that. I really did not need this box to come today. I really needed the, uh, uh, the Get FPV box to come today, and it did not. Uh, Denzel asks, what are you using those little 6S batteries from? I did, um, the, uh, the new O3 cyclists chasing, uh, build. Uh, I need to plug this camera in. So I need to pop this AIO back up. All right. And yeah, I, I have a feeling I'm going to end up sticking with 4S. Uh, but I, I do I do want to try it. I, I am curious uh, if I get a significant the 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 other cool thing about 6s for those builds is that um, I've been dying for a little bit more power and a little bit more KV uh, in Denver. What one of the events that they fly me out to to do is in Denver, and the air density there is brutal. Um, and the wind is also brutal. So that that race last year, that NCL, so that's a different organization. That's National Cycling League. Um, that race last year was one of the biggest challenges I've ever had in, in FPV because my um, first of all, there was something, there was some weird RF shit going on. I was getting fail safes, uh, but. Much more so than that, the my area of coverage from turn seven or eight to the finish line had a whole bunch of trees, and then the wind was blowing horizontally through those trees. So I would go from like turbulent air to just straight up wind, to turbulent air to straight up wind, and uh man it, it was it was rough the the quad was getting kicked around big time and uh i had the pid loop cranked i mean the, the those rigs fly beautifully all the time but all of a sudden they were not flying beautifully um it was doable and like they you know they they, they took my camera quite a bit 
uh, when I say take my camera, that means they switch and show my camera on the live stream. Uh, switch to and show my camera on the live stream. Uh, but yeah, I, I was, it was a situation where it was like, damn, I wish this was a three inch rig or I wish these motors were higher KV or bigger motors or it, it would have just really helped uh, the PID loop to have enough jam to stabilize it a little bit more. So there's a potential that 6S may have fixed that situation because, I mean, at the very least, with 6S batteries, I can run 4S KV motors and then just don't motor limit them all the way down, right? Like motor limit them down to like 90%. Um, yeah, that's a scenario. It's a perfect example of where motor limiting would have been amazing. Like ideally, I wish that we had motors that were a high enough KV so that I could run 4S um, and then just have the motor limiting turned on, right? If, if we had like 1404 motors that were like 5,000, 5,500, 6,000 KV, uh, that would be great, but we don't, I mean, there, there are, there is like one, I think 5,000 KV 1404, but it's made by a company that I don't necessarily trust. Um, I need these motors to be from like T motor or something like that, because I'm putting this thing up in the air you know, a foot over the head of like some world-class athletes and, and I don't want to be that guy, right? So that ruins it for everybody. I need, uh, I need the little screws to knock this canopy. Oh, fart. Where, oh man, I just put them back and like organize this all nice, come on. Should be in this bag. This bag, no, that means it's this bag here. Hello, Teddy Spaghetti. How are you, sir? How are you? Are you ready to go to bed with Azalea yet? Mm. God. Wait until later, buddy. I'm going to chop you into pieces and grill you up so that nobody else can have you. Where the hell is my little bag of... Happy model screws. I have a specific little bag with the happy model screws. Did I put it into this one? Doesn't look like it. Oh, no, yep, yeah, there's a whole big bag of them. Yep, there they are. Uh, Kevin Summer says, uh, long wire is usually uh, for fixed wing. Ah, right, 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 fixed wing. I forget that those people exist. Maniacs. I'm certain that they think we're the crazy ones. They're wrong. All right, we got some screws. And here we go. 1158, we're not doing too bad. We are not doing too bad. I'll have this thing done in five-ish minutes and then we can put it in the beta flight, get the motor spinning the right direction, put it right on up in the air. This is uh, this is an AIO that I've been using forever, so it's bound, it's ready to go. So yeah, there won't be any real surprises here. Oh boy, I wish I hadn't said that out loud. That was a stupid thing to say with my big dumb flappy head. There won't be any problems, Jesus. So I should just stop now and I'll just say like, all right, we ran into problems that I couldn't get fixed. Next time you'll see this thing fly, but instead I'll torture myself and keep going here. And then inevitably some bullshit one time only one off problem that nobody's ever seen before will happen. Here it comes. Let's plug the motors in and then the weird problem will, will begin. Oh man, these are, <laughs> these motor leads are super long. 802 is a motor that's like suited for 75 or 65. Uh, so Happy Model puts really long motor wires on them, which is great. And, and you need that for 75s. It, it, it makes sense for them to do that. But when you put them on a 65, it, sometimes it's like, whoa. I could run, I could plug this motor into the opposite corner almost. <laughs> Don't do that. I'm getting away of the battery. But you could. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah, so Maggie and I have been going to uh, these couples dance lessons every Sunday for the last like two months. And uh, I've always I I've always wanted to learn to dance. Like I I've been in situations in my life where it's like people are dancing and I don't know how to dance. And it's like, man, it would be cool to know how to dance. But I just never learned because, you know, some things in life are just terrifying for absolutely no reason. Um Maggie uh, was a belly dancer for many years, and she's a she does lots of dance fitness stuff. She's a super, super, super talented dancer. And uh, it's like her dream that that I'm doing this. And like, admittedly, I, I kind of did start it just like to be amazing, right? Like when when you're with somebody and they do something that you love, it's like the coolest thing ever, right? And so like, admittedly, at first, I was like, yeah, I, I don't know if I'm gonna like this or whatever. But like, I at least have to try it. Like, I I was basically doing it for Maggie, right? Like initially, I, I, not totally, but to some extent, yeah, right? Um, but there was always in the back of my head, like, yeah, this will be cool. Like, I, I, I do want to learn to dance, always have. So I started to push on this propeller, and it's a little bit too tight, so we're going to pin vice it. Uh, so at first, Super, 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 super anxiety. Still super anxiety. Um, what's cool, though, is when you go to a beginner's dance class, every single person there is is in the same situation. They all have mega, 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 mega anxiety. Um, and so we've gone for every Sunday for like two months. And go figure, uh, I'm starting to get a little bit better. And... Something about me is that I typically don't enjoy things. And I don't like this about myself. I really don't. Uh, but there are just things about us that are hard-coded for whatever reason. And you can either be okay with them and love yourself, or you can hate yourself and not be okay with them. I suggest loving yourself uh, for so many reasons. Uh, now that I'm starting to get a little bit better... It's really fun. Uh, I spent like two hours last night. Nah, maybe not two hours. Maybe like an hour last night uh, just watching dance stuff on YouTube. And I spent like another probably like two hours today. Um, and yeah, it's it's fun. Uh, one of the things I'm most excited about with this is that I, I think that dance is going to finally be my way of getting in shape. Uh, I hate exercising. I hate gyms. I hate the people in gyms. Not all of them, but you know what I mean. Uh, and so, and, and I'm getting older. And so I need to get in shape. And I'm really excited that dance could be the uh, could be the thing. Like for for I, I I've when I've had hobbies that uh, that required exercise, I've been in good shape. I, I've been in good shape at at points in my life. Uh, now is not one of those points. When I was into airsoft, I was in great shape, amazing shape. Uh, uh, when I turned 30, I started longboarding, longboard skateboarding. I got into shape quick. Uh, I've revisited longboard skateboarding, and it's helped me get in shape uh, during the divorce. Yeah. And and so, yeah, I in order for me to get in shape, I have to do something that I enjoy. And so, yeah, it's it's looking like this might be that. And I'm, I'm actually really, really excited. Wait, no, that's not the one. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here it comes, motherfuckers.
you go. There's the there's the unveiling. Do you guys like that? I assume that everybody likes that. I don't care if you don't like it. I like it. <laughs> H2O with a $5 super chat. Thank you so much, brother. He says, I need stick ends for my Radio Master Boxer, and I need something soft for my thumb. Uh, and what's the number on those? They have the M3 and M4. Which one? Uh, I don't know. I don't have the, uh, I don't have a Radio Master Boxer. Does anybody have a Radio Master Boxer that can uh, help H2O know if it's M3 or M4? Um, I know that's not a, uh, that's not a spec. Like when, when you look at a, at the specs on a transmitter, they never tell you if it's M3 or M4. Um, hopefully it's M3 because my box of M4 stick ends, uh, disappeared. Uh, Oh, it is M4. Akash uh, says M4 for Boxer in TS16. Um, so as as a part of joining my disc, uh, my Patreon, uh, which you can do for three whole dollars a month, um, you get full access to the Discord channel. There's a text channel on Discord called Stick Ends. Did I change the name yet to be less childish? Nope, I didn't. It's actually called Stick and Dick Ends. Uh, in there, I bought one of every M3 and M4 stick end that was in stock and existed. And I put together these big boxes and for the price of shipping or more, if you chose to, uh, you could rent those boxes out for me. Uh, the uh, They went out to a lot of people, man. I I'm, I'm surprised this didn't happen sooner, but the box of M4 stick ends vanished at some point um, and so it's gone. And it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. <laughs> Uh, because stick ends are all like 20, 30, 40 dollars each, and there's a lot of them. Uh, so yeah, the I still have the M3s. They actually just went out yesterday or today, I think. Uh, Should have gone out. Nope, they haven't gone out yet. They're going out tomorrow. I hope. Uh, but you said you need something soft, and there's only like one there's only like one that's 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 soft and it's on pyro drone and i hope that they still have it i like for real i bought all the stick ends i bought all of these all of these i bought every that were in stock every single one of these every single one of these i went onto every single website and i bought every single stick end i could find i literally just searched google for fpv stick ends and i bought all of them these are the ones, my friend, and here they are in M4. These are the only soft stick ends. Uh, they're like a rubberized material, and they're actually really nice. I really liked these, um, but I didn't fly better with them. When I looked at my flight, I, I put I put probably like 50 or 60 batteries into these stick ends. Um, I know they look plastic, but they're not. They're this really, really, really nice soft rubber. These are awesome. Um, and yeah, I put a shitload of batteries into these to get used to them. Uh, but then the, the, at the end of the day, like I, I, the, the end all be all was I looked at my flight footage, um, for those. And then I put like the normal stick ends that I, the, the other ones that I liked on and it was just better. I, I just flew better with smaller stick ends. These are, um, they are about the size of a marble. Did you have marbles when you were a kid? The the smaller marbles, they're they're maybe a little bit bigger than a small marble. There has to be something around here. Uh, they're about the size of the head of an antenna. They're about this big. They're they're just the right size. They're not too big. They're not too small. They're they're bigger than a normal stick end. Um, you know what they're the size of? You have these floating around the house. Um, they are the size of the little the little ear headphone ear gummies, you know, you know what I mean? You have a set of headphones, you have a set of in-ears somewhere. They're basically this same diameter of these little in-ear jobbers. Um, really cool stick end, really, really interesting stick end. Get those. You'll, they're the only soft stick end. So they're kind of your only option, but uh, I think you're going to dig them. They're, 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 they're nice. I, I really, they were, uh, I got the red ones and they like looked kind of cool. Uh, and I was, I really wanted to, to run them, but what's up Apache smoke. How are you brother? Uh, all right. I got some batteries that are charged. We're going to do some flying. 
to round out the stream here. This is the kind of sort of indestructible uh, tiny whoop uh, that you can't build. You can't get this AIO and these motor bells are out of stock and these motor stators are out of stock. Uh, we talked about it earlier. Uh, this is just a fun little thing I've been waiting to do forever. Uh, Gemfan makes a 1208 tri-blade propeller that has a one and a half millimeter uh, hole in it, which is why I've been wanting to do this, just to kind of see. Uh, but yeah, I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna truly test if this thing is indestructible. What's happening with this motor? What's happening here? Is it okay? It's a weird, nah, it's fine. Yeah, no, it's good. Uh, I thought there was something going on. I was wrong. Oh, the dog just went. <clears throat> He's asleep over on the couch. He didn't want to sleep with his alley tonight for some reason. He wants to bother me instead. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want to bother me instead of sleeping with Azalea? Uh, all right, here we go. STO, there it is. That's what they're called, STO. I think that's the company that makes them. STO CTRL. Yeah. Yeah, they're really cool. I, I was really impressed by these stick ends. I really, really was. Uh, wait, no, leave this up. Beta flight. Uh, Metal says, the 533 ones appear to be resin printed. Reports are that those crack, correct. Uh, but they typically crack when you over tighten them. So stop gorilla handing them onto your transmitter and uh, you won't crack them. There's no reason to, to crank the uh, the things on super tight. Uh, but yeah, they do absolutely crack. All the resin printed ones. Um, not all of them, but like I've seen many people uh, and, and many of the resin printed ones uh, from the the kits that I sent out uh, ended up getting cracked people would send me a picture like hey I just cranked these onto my my transmitter and it cracked so sorry I'm like dude nope that that's this is perfect like this is the the feedback that we want don't go full throttle thank you all right so one of the props is hitting on something probably just the frame here we go in wrong they're all gonna be wrong aren't they Two is wrong. Three is wrong. Four is wrong. Yep. Yeah. And this is really banging on the, the duct somewhere. Uh, if you if you have mo if if you build a tiny whoop and the props and or motors are banging on the frame like that, I'm going to show you how to fix it. You just put it into turtle mode. When you put it into turtle mode normally the, the props flex up a little bit, right? Because they're creating thrust. They're pushing air down, so the props deflect up. If you go into turtle mode, the props deflect down, and the ducts are usually like this. So you mash the mash the propeller down into the duct, and it wears a groove in the duct, and it, and it takes a little bit, off the, little bit of material off the tip of the propeller, and it takes the exact amount of material off each blade of the propeller, so the propeller stays um, balanced. Tricks, yo! I got tricks. I got nothing but tricks. I gotta, I gotta send Nightwing a thank you for the uh, Runcam Nano three that he threw in. Uh, I'm gonna go old school HD threes again because I don't really need the DVR of this from the HD zeros, and these goggles are infinitely more comfortable. Let's see how this thing is, man. 802, 33,000 kV motors on Gemfan 1208. Tri-blades. Uh, hold on. No, 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 Wait. Wait, you weigh all the things. This should be kind of heavy. Lightweight frame, Cockroach 65 V3. Lightweight camera and canopy, lightweight antenna, but heavy motors, heavy props. Uh, I'm gonna guess 18 and a half grams. 19.8 grams. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, if you're gonna build something indestructible, it's gonna be heavy. At 19.8 grams, this is gonna fly like a sack of assholes. But let's do it anyway. Wow, 19.8 grams. These motors are heavy as shit. Yo, this frame is light. This antenna is stupidly light. 
Jesus, that's a fat bastard. I got a surprise for you guys. I've got a surprise. Ready for the surprise? Parkour guy, all you gotta do is buy a uh, Mobula 7 1S ELRS, and then when they come back in stock, put the, uh, the iGAM motors on it. <laughs> There's your surprise. Surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> there he is. I'm gonna go into turtle mode, and I'm gonna spin each motor up. Ah, motor three won't spin actually. It's so jammed up that it won't spin. So what I do in that case is just give it a little bit of help. Just push into, push into it and then just give it a little flick and usually it'll overcome. Nope, in this case it's not. Come on, there it goes. All right, so that's the one that wasn't spinning. That's all the other four and they're good to go. And now the props are still balanced and they're gonna clear and we're gonna fly. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, whoa. Okay. All right. Oh, it's heavy, boy. Oh, it's got some power, though. Yo, these 802 33,000s make. Oh, boy. Yeah, they make power. But, boy, this thing is a fat ass. Oh, look at it. Carry that fucking momentum around. Yeah, so you see how it just slides. It just kept sliding into the chair. I didn't, I didn't want to hit the chair there, but it just got in there. Uh, but yeah, man, these. This is not nearly as bad as I would think. I mean, going around corners is is where you really feel the the weight. Oh boy, it just fell out of the air. Not not a great sign. On tiny whoops, you can ignore when they fall out of the air. Oh, God, that's the TV. Boy, is this heavy. Holy. Oh, my God. Oh, Teddy, relax. Don't eat it. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, it's got the power to back it up, but yikes, it's hard to fly at this weight. This battery's done. All right, let's get this battery out of here. This is an older battery, too. Uh, the, don't, the, that runtime is not, uh, yeah, the, the, oh, the, the weight is the motor wires. Good call, McMucus. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, the motor wires being super long is very, very heavy for sure. Good, 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 good call. Uh, parkour guy, uh, yeah, we got that. Yeah, that's all my jungle gym basher actually is, uh, is a Mobula 7 1SLRS with, uh, 802 27,000 KV motors. Nice and simple. All right, here we go. Ah, nice fresh battery. Let's get it upstairs. It's, oh man, it's, it is so hard to fly up those stairs with a heavy rig. Man, these motors make fucking power though, dude. 802, 33,000. When, when I had these, when I first got these motors, I was blown away at the power. And I still am. Oh my god. But shit, the momentum. Um it's kinda too late to to go like hammering this thing around in there because Maggie is asleep right in there. Not not here, but right in there. Um but like I will inevitably crash it a couple times. But yeah, like I said earlier, I'm not gonna hammer the hell out of this thing. Uh, I do have the fan spinning the opposite direction, though. So we can maybe get a good synchronized fan orbit. Almost. Almost got it locked in. Do it more in the next battery. I like these two cubes being here. Oh, wow, I got really lucky there. Man, it, it carries so much momentum. <laughs> uh, it actually makes... Oh, boy. That sucks. Uh, okay. That saying polarized means that it's inside my camera bag up there. So I just have to go get it. Oh, I'll be back. Sorry, guys.
Oh, buddy, you okay? Well, you hit your little snout. Man, I couldn't find the damn thing. I put I put uh, Teddy to Teddy to bed. Uh, what did I do with the goggles? There, they are. there they are. Right, here we go. Ooh, it's getting hot. Cool down, little buddy. Cool down, little buddy. Cool down. Cool down. Okay. Whew. Yo, it's hard to get out of here. Ready? Watch how difficult this is. Fuck. I got it quick though. I've been stuck in there for like thirty seconds before. Look at that. Oh, boy. So the... Man, the weight really carries. Look at the hang time. So we've got enough power. Jesus, but then it's hard to catch. That's... Man, it, it's, it really just lays out in the air. Oh, yo. So... I've always kind of wondered... I, I've been wondering more since uh, since flying uh, since upgrading the Mobula Six 2024 the other day when it when it was like 17.1 grams. Um, I've kind of wondered if there would be a point that was a hard hit. If there would be a point that uh, we got too light and there wasn't enough weight. For the throw and this rig is the perfect test of that uh, because this is these are really powerful motors and this is a really heavy really durable rig so I am absolutely gonna leave this thing together because this is a perfect test bed for like looking at like the extremes this is the extreme side of heavy but lots of power um this is actually really really cool i'm super glad that i built this uh yeah just just in the process of flying this thing i'm gonna get to see like what what the effect i i hope you guys can see it i can feel it on the sticks but you'll probably be able to see it because it's stuff like that the way that it hangs in the air like that and how it carries its weight and just pushes through the air um that is what I'm interested in. Yeah, that's that's what uh, I've kind of questioned for a long time. Here we go. What I will say is that um, Ibrahim, uh, best outdoor tiny whoop. Uh, that's just too open ended. Uh, my best is going to be totally different than your best. Um, and there kind of is no best. There's just different. So yeah, that, that's a little too open-ended of a question, and there are too many options as well. 
what I will say is that a heavier rig, and you're going to get to see this, a heavier rig is way harder to fly, and you're going to crash a lot more. Oh, shit. I, I tried to do something different and just... Look at... All right, so so here's, a, here's an example. Here's a perfect example. All right? So, this is a move I do all the time. Oh, for Christ's sakes. I have to sit on the throttle more because it's it's so much heavier. All right, so you guys see me do this all the time, right? Through here. Fuck you! Yeah, it's got a lot of power, but it also has a lot of weight. All right, so you guys see me do this all the time. And and then, so the end of that move, my, in my preference to the end of this move, is to drop down into the Weebleed gate and then fly out of it, right? So ideally, it's that. That's what I want out of that move. I cannot remember the last time that I oh, that I so consistently overshot that cube on the ground there. And the reason why is the weight. It's it's ca it's just carrying more weight. It's just mashing through the air. Uh, that was an old moldy battery. That's why the runtime was so short. Uh, so yeah, that is super, super, super interesting. Re um, realistically, for everybody's space, there is a right all up weight, right? This is a fairly small room in here. So in this smaller room, the lighter weight rigs are probably better, but now we've gotten so lightweight that maybe not, maybe like the ultimate freestyle tiny whoop at like 18 point something grams is perfect. Maybe 17 point something grams is too light. The problem with that is the lighter weight rigs are, are just more accurate. They're, they're, they're easier to fly. You're going to crash less. Um, but it's something to think about when, when you are building your perfect ultimate freestyle tiny whoop, right? Like power is not everything. Just being as light as possible is not everything. Um, there's potentially a point where you can go too light. Uh, you know, the five inch guys talk a lot about this. Like it, it, it's like, <laughs> it's like the first excuse that people with fat, like 800 plus gram five inch rigs go to. Oh, I like the weight. It throws better. It's like, well, no, you just printed all the TPU shit or bought all the TPU shit and you don't want to just not use it. Um, but to some, I mean, there, there is a little bit of truth to that. 800 plus grams is, is absolutely ridiculous. Um, but yeah, uh, there is something to be said for, like a 700 gram rig versus a 600 gram rig. Uh, it, it does throw like crazy. And so what you're going to see me do now is like, oh, crash into the goddamn door frame. Uh, you're going to see me like adjust, adjust this rig. Man, the, so the other thing that the weight does is it actually slows it down. See, I like that whole man. I I was on the throttle for a while and I couldn't catch it. Um, it it slows everything down because it's so heavy, right? Like the the lightweight rigs, your your pacing has to increase. You have to do everything faster because they're changing directions faster. Um, yeah, this thing is. Uh, Notice will be slower. Oh, I went in the side of the damn thing. <laughs> that was pretty slick. Oh, yeah. So I'm not throwing it up to the ceiling. But if I do, oh, I got fanned. Oh, that was a hard hit. I got fanned on that one. Let's try to get a, a half decent fan orbit. Problem is it takes so much throttle. I wish this fan would spin slower. Almost there. There it is. Oh, that would have been cool. I don't usually do it in that direction. So she said. Ah, I bailed a little too early. I should have let it fall. I would have gone in there. Ah. 
That's what he said. Oh, shit. Ah, <laughs> It's cool, man. The, the, this this is cool looking. Like it, the the weight really slows things down. Um, but boy, oh boy, does it carry its momentum like a motherfucker. I close my eyes on that one. Oh, the sim rig ate me. Ow! That was I don't know what I was planning on that one. Oops, no. Still very snappy. Let's oh, really still very snappy because it's got great power. Thirty-three thousand KV eight hundred twos are just mangling. These props actually feel fine. Yeah, I can feel the weight for sure in here. This is like the little super technical flying challenge that I do. But you know what's funny? It feels heavier, but then I, I just, I end up doing this slower, and it's kind of fine. Like, the, the, the extra weight, since it has enough power, I guess, um, it, it's sort of manageable. And, and, you know, doing, like, in and out of there, I'm not really generating any momentum. It's going so slow that that extra weight is not really, like, coming into play. So, like, where quads struggle in that little figure eight is when they're sloppy and they don't have enough power to to really, like, be locked in and, and like, super on the sticks. Uh, flying around the room where I'm covering some, some forward ground, that's where the weight really hurts because it's just fat. It's just, ah, just charging forward and then you try to turn. It doesn't want to turn. 19.8 uh, grams, Steve. Uh, which is very, very, very heavy for a 65 mil rig in 2024. Two years ago, that would have been a totally normal weight. But uh, Yevon says uh, maybe 802 walk snail overheating because you run bi blade and motors should spin faster than tri blade. Uh, that's the reason why I want to try 802 with Azzy tri blade lightweight props. Um, so walk snail overheats because walk snail overheats it has nothing to do with motors or tri blades or bi blades it's it, those are two completely unrelated things micro pp thank you so much for the five pln's uh much appreciated my man thank you for the support very cool of you um so yeah walk snail overheating has nothing to do with propellers or or any of that uh they drive the shit out of the processor on there and then we remove the heat sinks um, and yeah, no airflow is the reason that they overheat and they only overheat when, when the, when the motors are off. So it, it couldn't possibly have to do with, with bi blades or tri blades or motors or anything. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, the Azzy tri blade, uh, all the Azzy props fly great, but they're just so fragile. Um, be really careful, uh, because if you have one let go and you're somewhere unrecoverable, you could lose the whole rig. So yeah, be, be super careful with that. Uh, we did all the things. What else is there to do? It's, it's one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's 1234. Uh, oh, Yevon says I meant motors overheating. Uh, maybe 802 motors overheating are because you run bi blade and the motor should faster, uh, than tri blade. That's the reason I want to try 802 with as he tri blade light props. Ah, interesting. Um, so at okay so a rig is hovering it has to make a static amount of thrust to to stay up in the air right so the the wind speed blowing over the motors to keep them cool is going to be pretty much the same regardless of bi blades or tri blades or whatever um technically yes the the motors spinning a little bit faster is going to create a little bit more uh friction but that's not that that the the friction of the motor shaft in the the on these things they're bushings um that's not where the motor heat comes from the the motor heat comes from the motor taking electricity in and con and driving this propeller and and turning it into heat as a byproduct of of the work that's being done um so yeah i i mean you never know but i i can't possibly imagine that 
um, that it'll it'll make any actual difference. Uh, because yeah, the the way that the magnets and the stator and whatnot work, they don't really care how fast or slow they're they're spinning. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think that'll have any effect on it. Uh, Kevin Sumner says, I didn't see you. Uh, I didn't see you read my message earlier, so repeating just in case. Uh, if you can't get with Bob, message me, and I can uh, print and ship uh, them out to you tomorrow. Uh, Kevin, can can you just do that, dude? That that would be amazing. I'm going to message you over on... Where do you want me to message you, Kevin? What's the easiest? Patreon? Uh, not Patreon. Discord? Uh, dude, thank you. Very, very cool of you. Um, if you have black, that would be great. If not, uh, violet, purple... Or red would be amazing uh actually dude kevin can i just do this discord or imessage there's the 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 link to this thing of ours. can you just uh i don't i guess i don't what is this i don't think i need this oh there might be some cool things on here let me let me look through this uh, i'm gonna look through this i'm gonna message you on uh on uh, discord dude thank you very very cool of you uh, Bob has already printed a bunch of stuff for me. So I feel bad being like, hey, thanks for all that stuff you printed. Uh, can you do a rush job for nothing? <laughs> um, where the hell are you in my Discord? Have we really not talked that? Oh, because we keep talking on uh, text. That's why. Uh, I'll just text you. Don't you dare print it in y'all. <laughs> Uh, thanks for hanging, friends. Indestructible tiny whoop. Yeah, none of those crashes even remotely did a single thing to this. The, these these are stupidly uh, durable motor shafts. Uh, these sixteen oh eight propellers are very durable. What an interesting little rig to to fly. What a what a cool uh, experience to fly something this heavy. But Jesus, it's got. Uh, just a ball load of power. Um, Steve Jobs says, "What weight do you like for sixty-five millimeter tiny whoops?" I, I mean the 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 Mobula Six Twenty Twenty Four the other day that we got down to seventeen point one. I think I like that best, uh, but I'm I'm still kind of playing around. I, I I haven't flown it quite enough to to really lock in on that. But man, the the lighter you go, the more accurate it is. And that just feels great. It feels great to have it be super, super accurate. And you literally crash less. Um, but, you know, this is kind of fun to, to kind of expose what you lose when you go super light like that. Um, I I won't end up... This will not become my favorite rig. It, it's too heavy. But it's just an interesting kind of reminder of... Yeah, super, 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 super lightweight isn't always the answer when it comes to freestyle. Um, so yeah, options. But I think that as light as you can possibly get it uh, without sacrificing durability is, is the way to go. That That's still kind of where I'm at. Thanks for hanging, friends. My name is Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti. www.ciottifpv.com to support me and keep this thing going. We're totally crowdfunded. Um, if you have three extra dollars a month, throw it my way over on Patreon. You'll get a ton of benefits. And I'll keep doing this, and you will inevitably save way more than $3 a month on the knowledge that I be dropping on your beautiful faces. Uh, speaking of, ah, I'm going to do it next time. Uh, I, I have a bunch of, uh, there's a, a bunch of new patrons that uh, that are going to be getting some awesome shout-outs, but I don't want to do it at the end of the stream. That's not cool. I'll do it on Wednesday stream. Love you guys. Bye! Here's the uh, here's me flying the uh, partial eclipse here in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. I played this at the beginning of the stream, but I'll play it again. Uh, this is flown by the uh, Walksnail powered 65 millimeter uh, RC drift car chasing rig. This is a Cockroach 65 V3 frame. Uh, the uh, Batwing mount that uh, Timmins made for me. Uh, Walksnail light, uh, Beta FPV cross AIO, and 0702 36,000 kV motors. Actually, here's what I'm going to do I'm going to give you guys the. Uh, the goggle DVR. So you get to see this thing brown out in midair and then me switch to uh, Horizon and save it and not put it into a tree or just generally lose it forever.
I don't, I don't know what will happen. I guess the video will just go black. But yeah, this is the goggle DVR. At the beginning of the stream, I played you the uh, the DVR from uh, from the onboard on the next battery that I flew. This is the battery right before that one where uh, I just sat it at full throttle for like a, a full second and it in the middle of the battery and it drained the battery so much that it browned the, uh, the uh, BTX out. Is this that battery? Nope, this ain't the one. So that would mean that it's this one. Oh, did it? Oh, interesting. Here's where it came back. It split the files up. Aha. So. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to have to manually switch the, the file over, but you'll, yeah, you'll see it. That's funny. That's super funny. All right, here you guys go. So I'm going to, I'm going to, oh, wait, no, uh, this program will automatically go from the one to the other. Cool. So this will be a long outro, but yeah, you'll get the uh, the full battery, and then it'll switch to the next battery when I recovered it, when, when Walksnail booted back up. <laughs> Sketchy. All right, yo, be good, friends. Bye-bye.